take down notes. Okay, just take down notes of everything that I am going to discuss for tonight's video. Yeah, if you cannot hear me, uh, loud and clear, so you can tell or you can interrupt during my discussion. Okay, yeah. sorry, it's fine. I mean, I can say that, um, so we cannot see the your slides. Okay, ganun na lang. Sabi niya sa akin. Kuha niyo ba? Raise your hand if you can understand me. If you understand me, sorry, if you understand me. Very good. Mabuti na matat naintindihan niyo ako at pwede na tayong magpatuloy sa ating discussion tonight. So our class will be, our discussion will be more about anatomy and physiology. So this is an online review class. Okay, so what I use here in my online class, I also use this one in my uh, face-to-face class. Okay, so... Can you raise your hand down? Okay, so we are a agri review program, agri cola review program. So, yeah. so we talk about animal anatomy and physiology. This is the introduction. So we will tackle the introduction of uh, animal science, which is the animal anatomy and physiology of the animal science. So, yun. Yeah, inisa ko na lang yung introduction niya doon sa isa. Actually, we will talk about chemical compound, the path, and then uh, classification. So what I, dis I, I did is that uh, we will tackle first na lang muna yung uh, tinatawag nating uh, classification. Kasi yung chemical compound can be used or can be discussed during animal nutrition. Okay, so there are a lot of terms in the uh, animal science that you need to uh, familiarize or memorize. Okay, so, the, and you need to be familiar with, okay? Kasi kailangan maging familiar kayo sa mga terminologies na yun, especially kung anong tawag sa uh, lalaki na rus, uh, lalaki na, ha, ano, lalaki na manok, okay? Yes, Ma'am Lorena? Yes, Angelica, you're raising your hand. And Michelle, do you have any question? Okay, so there are a lot of... Uh, there are a lot of... Okay, there are a lot of terminologies that you need to know, especially terminologies on uh, swine, uh, cattle, yun, poultry, madaming ganun. So, and also, uh, may iba bang pang mga terminologies, very uh, important terminologies on you know, animal science, okay? So, that's very important. Okay, so what to study in animal uh, anatomy and physiology? Of farm animals okay so the first thing that you need to study is the um introduction which is the cell so we will tackle about the cell ngayon, gabi, and then hopefully we finish we can finish all the slides tonight so that we can proceed to the other um uh we can finish the introduction tonight so that we can proceed to the formal anatomy and physiology of farm animals tomorrow and we have here the external anatomy of farm animals which is the body organization how the body movements of the animals and we have the integumentary system, which is, talks about the study of skin, okay? And the uh, internal anatomy of farm animals. So we have skeletal system, uh, muscular system, nervous system, endocrine system. Yan, pag-uusapan natin yan. And the uh, cardiovascular system, lymphatic system, uh, respiratory system. Yan, pag-uusapan din natin. And urinary system, digestive system, and the digestive, digestive system of monogastric animals. And we have also the four compartment or the ruminant animals. Okay. And receptive system, we will tackle also that. And also the hemist, excuse me, thermoregula thermoregulation or the body temperature regulation. Okay. So the uh, uh, homeotherms and the poike. All the terms, okay? So this is our table of contents. We have our organs. So we'll talk about organs. We have digestive systems, urinary systems, muscles, skeletons, and comparisons of the other as the topic of the section, okay? And we have here the animal anatomy. So let's go first. 
uh, to the structure. And this is my introduction to animals. I suppose we should have our introduction about the current events and the issues um, concerning the animal industry of the Philippines. Pero hindi ko na lang sinama kasi that will be discussed on my final coaching. Okay? So on the final coaching, I encourage everyone to um, enroll in my class during the final coaching because in the final coaching, there will be an exposing of uh, test papers coming from 2019 questionnaires no nanangaling talaga sa PRC yung set of uh, questions coming from PRC okay na we um we, we purchase it from the other source that's why CBRC having a uh, you know a good uh, ano uh, national passing rate because of that uh test papers okay yeah if you cannot afford to have your final coaching or your of a review session in the CBRC, you can have your uh, final coaching and review with me. Okay? So, yeah. And introduction. So, introduction of the animal science. We have the classification. I talk about classification. How will you classify? How will you classify the animals according to the family, to the phylum, division, uh, to the order? No? Yeah. So they are classified no in different ways and we talk about classified that is the organization no organization organization from the top to bottom okay so we have classification is the process uh, used by scientists to make sense of uh, the 1.5 million or so different kinds of living organisms on the planet and it does this by describing naming and placing them in different groups so how are you going to uh, name no how do you are going to make scientific names of the animals the plants you know so that is classification okay so as veterinary nurses uh we are also one of uh, can be you no know, we can be a uh, uh veterinary assistant veterinary or we can be a veterinary nurses but we are not a doctors we are not veterinary doctors only doctors of veterinary medicine can be a doctor no they are uh yes they can be a doctor and then we have also Ui, who's this Animal Science Students Association. We have MMSU, CAFSID. Sino to? And we have here, so this one. So not only in the animals, no? Not only in the animals that have a classification. Also, mayroon din siyang rely on the plant kingdom. So magkaiba lang sila ng ano, structure of cells yung, uh, and also the, the, the parts of the cells in animal kingdom and also in the plant kingdom okay, to, for food to survive. And also, uh, we all know that animal kingdom is um, dependent, dependable, no? uh, dependable to the plant because the animal cannot be, uh, uh, cannot, be alive, cannot be lived forever or in a long time without plants. So they need plants no? because the plants can be converted into protein. In the body of animals okay again so we have your kingdom for to survive in that also many diseases that animals affected by our members of other kingdoms so fungi bacteria and say single cell animals so we'll tackle that as we go on to our presentation uh, classification for example the name gopher it is used for a ground squirrel so if with squirrels i know um Yan, sa, ano, may palabas na na yan, may squirrels. <laughs> I hope you're familiar with the squirrels. And then we have uh, rodents, yung tumitira sa tree. Yan. And we have here uh, rodents. We have rodents and then that is a uh, pocket gappers. Now, uh, rodents that, has a, that is a pocket gappers, sorry. Pocket gappers. And we have uh, four moles. And in the Southeast Asia, Eastern United, uh, United States for a turtle. Okay, this is the reason why all the animals have been given an official scientific or binomial name because of the uh saan sila nanggaling where are their uh kung saan sila originated okay so minsan ganyan eh pag gawa ng scientific name they are using it kung saan sila talaga originated okay kung uh, sino talaga yung meron din sino yung naka-invent no yun nilalagay nila into scientific names and then unfortunately the uh, these um names are always in latin always remember that scientific name is written always in Latin. So for example, we have common rot, common rats, or common rat, which is ratus ratus. No, from its name, it's like a Latin. No, it's a Latin word. It's a Latin name. Okay. Kaya nga minsan, we're not I am I am not familiar with the word. I never um encountered it in English. I never encountered it in the Philippines. So 
Yeah, that's why it's it's different, no? That's why it's uh kaya nga it's Latin. It's Latin names. Okay, and you have also human. No human which is Homo sapiens and Homo and we have sapiens. Okay? And then we have your domestic cat which is Felus and then we have domesticus. Okay? And we have domestic dog. Yeah, the Felus and we have domesticus. Domestic dog which is Canis and familiaris. Okay? So, as you can see from the above, there are certain rules about writing scientific names. Yes, there are rules in uh, making scientific names. Hindi lang agad-agad nagagawa ka ng scientific names. Like me, example, if I saw a new rat, salang sabihin ko, ratus espinosas, ganon. Hindi naman pwede ganon. So, there are names. So, there are um, <coughs> certain rules in writing the scientific names. And they are, these are the basics no, that we commonly, uh, that commonly na lumalabas sa board examination yung uh, ano klaseng oh, ayan ano klase uh, para yung sorry para yung rules no in writing the scientific names so we have here we have number one they always uh, have two parts so they have always two parts so we have the we have the genus and the species as you can see here we have the ratus and we have the ratus so they have only two parts we have homo sapiens homo and sapiens so one and two then ocellus one and two domesticus and two Okay, so we have the next rules. The first part is the genus name. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Pangat. Yung panahon yun kasi rato inuubo at saka sinisipon. Sorry. And then we have here um uh, tawag dyan uh, Second, so second rules, yeah, the, the second rules in, uh, in, in writing the scientific name, you have genus, which is the first name. Now, the first part of the name is genus, and then and it's always written with a capital first letter. So, the, ibig sabihin, the first here, uh, the first name uh, in writing the scientific name is what we call the genus. Okay, so that is written in a uh, capital letter, yung kanyang first, uh, first letter, Okay. Yung first word, yung word niya, no, yung first letter niya that could be that should be written in capital letter. So the first one is what we call the genus. So the second name is a species name and it's always written in the lower case. So let's remember that that it is species. So a second naman, the second part naman which is the ratus, no, as you can see there. So we have here ratus. Ratus, ayan. So ratus is what we call a species. And it is written in lowercase. So, ibig sabihin, uh, since second siya, no word, so dapat uh, in uh, lowercase siya. Okay? So, hindi siya capital letter, but in a lowercase. And all the letters are kaya lower in lowercase. So, next, the name is always underlined or printed in italics. So, if ever that you cannot do an italics no, while writing, so you can do a underlining. No? Underlining the, uh, the word. Sorry. Okay, so we have here example, ratus, ratus. So this one is already in um, italic, right? <clears throat> so, naka-italic na siya. You don't need to um, underline it. So, if then hindi naka-italic yan, pag hindi siya naka-italic, so you're going to uh, make a line on it. Okay, so you need to make a line. If hindi siya naka-italic, okay? So, pag naka-italic siya, you don't need to put a line already because it's already um, uh, naka-mindset na yan na ah, it's, already, it's a scientific name. Okay, so that's how you are going to identify or classify names of the uh, of the animals, no? In scientific name, kung saan din sila nagmula, no? Isa din yan sa mga dahilan or reasons of the, most of the scientists. And they are also using their name. Meron na, meron namang word na ano eh, may lineus sa last. May ganun. Uh, say, galus na, galus, galus lin. Ganun. So, yung first le first word doon, yung galus, which is the big, big letter is what we call the genus. And then another galus naman, that is a the species. And then we have the lean, which is the um, the writer of the ano, or the inventory, uh, the, the the inventor or the one who invented the ano, uh, scientific names for chicken. Yeah. So these are the all members of the group called the vertebrates. Ibig sabi mong vertebrates, uh, ibig sabi may buto, no? Sabi sa pa bukog. Okay, so they have buto or bukog. Okay, or animals with a backbone. Yan, yan. Ni mga bunga mga mga Buto yung may mga backbone. Animals make up only about 8%. Mamamas make up only about 8% of this group. So how can you identify mamas, atro mamas? Atro mamas has a mammary gland. No? Meron siyang mammary gland. Meron siyang uh, odor kung saan 
dumedede, no? And then, um, uh, mamas that has a, uh, pag lumalabas, hindi, hindi egg ang lumalabas, kundi uh, pag, na, ano, pag nagkakaroon ng uh, parturation, no? Ang lumalabas is, uh, it's a complete, uh, yan, a, a complete metamorphosis already. So, that is what they call mammals. Okay, so yun. Tapos magdededet na lang siya, ganun. Hindi na maghintay ng hatching period. So, that is mammals. Okay? So, we have here the diagram on the next page. We have here the percentage of the different kinds of vertebras. So, we have, these are uh, different kinds of vertebras. So, we have fish, which is 55%. Yes, Michelle, you are raising your hand. Can you put your your hand down? Just put your raise da, your hand raise down. Bababa nyo na yung kamay niyo po. We have si Angelica and then we have Michelle. Kasi nagpa-pop up kasi dun sa ano, sa, sa system. And si Michelle also. Uwo na lang po ng ano ng hands. And we have here fish which is 55%, no? Consists in um, makeup in the Fili uh, in the Philippines, in the, in, the, in the world, no? We have here 55% of fish. We have mamas also 8%. And we have birds that is 16%. And reptiles is 12%. And we have amphibia which is 5%. And the rest here, this one, as you can see, the, there is, a, yeah, we have mammals here, we have birds and reptiles, amphibia, and the rest is fish. Okay? So, yun. Tinanong doon, ano, yan. Okay. So, we have here, vertebrates are divided into five groups or classes, namely, we have fish, amphibia, which is uh, more frogs and toads, no? Pag reptiles naman, no, they are snakes and crocodiles. And then we have also birds. And then we have mammals. Okay, so how will you classify mammals? No, the class mammalia, the mammals, the mammals contain three subclasses. What are those subclasses? We have number one, we have duck build. No, yung mga duck build, we, they call it platypus. Okay, they call it subclasses platypus and the spiny anterior. Yung mga duck build. Okay, we have also number two, yung uh, subclasses, we have marsupials. This is an animal like a kangaroo with pouches. Yung makita niyo yung mga kangaroo, di ba? They have pouches kung saan na mayroon doon yung order or yung mga mga gland ng sa loob. So, doon yung nag, doon nag de -de 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 yung ano yung anak nila. Okay, we have here also number three, which is true mammals. No, nasa true mammals that has a placenta. Okay, so yung tawag sa kanila, meron silang placenta. So, we have see, examples of six mammalian orders are given. Now, we have rodents, which is uh, rodentia. Ayan, this is the order. Rodentia, and then we have rats and mice. We have carnivores. I know some of you is having your screenshots. Okay, we have carnivora. Ayan, carnivores or carnivora. We have cats, dogs, bears, and seals. Okay. Advice ko lang sa inyo, mas maganda pa na i-write na lang ninyo kaysa mag-screenshot kayo. Kasi screenshot ng screenshot kayo, hindi nyo naman yan sa study. Stuck lang yan sa cellphone ninyo. <laughs> Reality. Yeah. <laughs> Buti sana, right after screening, after the screenshot, no, um, ilalagay sa notes. Okay, sana yun. Kaso lang iba eh. Screenshot, tapos ikaw yung screenshot lang. Hindi naman binabasa ulit. Hello yes. Po. Yes, good evening. Uh, okay lang po ba, sir, kung pa, uh, wag po masyadong mabilis, Ay, sir. Okay lang po. Pero nakikinig po kami. Hmm. Mm. Ah, okay. Mabilis na masyado. Sorry. <laughs> Hinabog ko sa yung oras. Okay. So, we have also even toad grazer. Okay. Thank you for that. Kat. And we have even toad. Pag sinabi mong even toad grazers, then we have your order Ardeotactyla. Okay. It is not usually yung um, lumalabas sa exam yung mga orders, orders. Pero, uh, meron namang lumalabas like ito. Yung mga like, rodents, carnivores, even toad grazers. Ang example ng mga even toad grazers. So, you have pigs, sheep, cattle, and antelopes. And you have another one, you have odd toad grazers naman. Okay, pag odd toad grazers, they are what we call perisodactyla. And we have, yan, um, mapag-uusapan naman bakit even toad grazers ang tawag sa ka odd toad grazers. Kasi nakadepende yan sila sa, ano, tinatawag natin movements. No, nakadepende sa movements yan. So, mayroon tayong tinatawag na, ano, sa so four horses. Ay, pag-uusapan yan, yan when they already reach animal anatomy. Okay, we have also perisodactyla, orders perisodactyla. Yeah, and so this is, for example, horses, donkeys, and zebras. And we have marine mammals, which is the order of cetacei. Ayan. So we have uh, whales, and then we have sea cows. Okay, so whales is also known as a uh, mama. So as what um, the scientists no, uh, research about uh, mammals, no, about the whales, no, unang panahon, yun, lumalabas daw yung, ano, basta they have, 
they have other, they have memory glands. Yan. So they have here, next we have another mammalian orders. We have primates. We have monkeys. Again, we have monkeys, primates, monkeys, apes, and humans. Okay? So we have, for example, within the carnivore mammals are the families. We have canidae. Yeah, if I remember this canidae, that is already dog. Yeah, and dog like carnivores. Yeah, and dog like canidae or can, canin. Yeah, canin. And then we have felidae. Yeah, felidae naman, that is cat like or carnivores. Yeah, feli, felis. Yeah, we have, that's why it's felidae. Okay? So in veterinary quarantine services, well, every time we issued permit, we usually use general term. Example, Pag dog ang i, uh, i, 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 i ship from Sambuanga to Manila, so ang tawag namin doon sa dog na yun is canine. Yung nalagay namin sa, kasi canine is, uh, <clears throat> uh, hindi siya, sorry, hindi siya naka-state kung malaki siya or babae ba. Okay, so ang ginawa namin is general term that is canine <clears throat> or canin. No, so isa, that means, uh, that means a dog. Okay, so pag ano naman, pag uh, kanin naman pag sa dog, pag sa cattle, it's bovine. Okay, sa cattle naman is bovine. Pag sa baboy, swine. Okay, pag sa goat naman is caprine or caprine. Yan, caprine or caprine ba yan? Pag sa horses naman, it's equine. Ayun. And we have naman sa, ano, sa, sa, man, sa, sa cat, which is feline. And lastly, we have chicken. Uh, avian. Yan, avian ang tawag namin sa chicken. Okay? So, yun, yung anim na yun. Yun ang, yun na namin, pinapaulit-ulit na, ano namin. Sa, when I was in quarantine, no? So, yun, under veterinary quarantine services. We are the one giving permit to the, uh, to the animals, no? Ship, uh, to ship, no? from its origin to its destination. And these groups are called genera. We have singular genus. Okay, so what are those genus we have here? Ayan. Uh, yeah, the final groups within the system are the species. The from family, we are from uh, genus to species. So you have here the definition of species is a group of animals that can mate successfully and produce fertile offspring. Pag sinabi mong species, they can mate successfully. Okay, and produce fertile offspring. No, they can produce offspring. Okay, so to summarize the classification systems, no, from that the animal kingdom, which is divided into, okay, so you have here animal kingdom divided with lang. Ko lang. Okay, so and then we have here. Okay, example we have here animal kingdom. Okay, animal kingdom is divided into. Okay, phyla or phylum. So that will be divided into phyla. Okay, so we write it phyla here, P. Okay, so next we have here that phyla which are divided into classes. Okay, so divided into classes. Again, divided into classes. And we have also orders, I mean, classes which are divided into, divided into orders. So you have here classes divided into orders. And I think I'll have. And we have it also divided into orders, divided into families. You have F, F, so on and so forth. Yan. Lagay nyo dyan. You have here F, F. Ganon din yan. Divide, divide lang, ha? And then, we have also families which are divided into... So, yung pen ko, no? wala na. <laughs> yeah. So, you have also families which are divided into... Families divided into genera. Okay? They are divided into genera. So, families divided into genera. Okay, yan. Yeah. So on and so forth, get on the yen, genera. Or uh, known as genus. Okay, we have next here, so on and so forth. And you have here 
genera which are divided into the last part which is the species which is the one that successfully uh, made successfully and produce fertile okay offspring so we have here species okay last part we have the species okay so to remember all of this we can use this word what we call this i uh, sorry uh, we can use this word uh King's place, yeah. We have key, King's play, cricket on flat green surfaces. No, yeah. If you are really, if you want to, I know, to memorize it, if you are uh, into mnemonics, yeah. Meron talagang statements na mnemonics din ang Yeah, and so you can have that King play, King play, King's play, cricket on flat green surfaces. So, yung key, key that is represent to the kingdom. We have P, pile uh, cricket, that is uh, classes, and then own. That is orders f that is families we have green genera that is surf services is species and we have the or kindly professors cannot often fail a good student Sana nga, no but if you are my if you were if you are my student no di ko lang alam. i cannot i cannot promise i can promise to na hindi kayo ibagsak okay depende kasi sa performance yan performance level po yan yun pag kulang naman sa mga requirements yan pre babagsak talaga walang ako si sir minsan okay so always remember that. Kasi hindi sa lahat ng panahon no, nasa sa atin yung ano, nasa sa atin yung uh, tayo yung laging pinapaboran. Okay? So ayan. So we have also here, sorry. Again, we have here, yan, are just two uh, phrases, but you can that, uh, use that phrases to students and then use to remind themselves of the order of these categories. On the other hand, you might like to invent your own. Pwede gumawa kayo ng sarili. Okay, sarili ninyong uh, mnemonics or summarization of the classification of systems. Okay? So you have here the summary. You have the scientific name of an animal has two parts. Always remember that we have genus, species, and must be written in italics or underlined. Yan, pa screenshot kayo dyan ngayon. And then you have number two. We have animals are divided into vertebrates and invertebrates. Pag sinabi mong vertebrates, that is yung mga may buto, yung mga backbones. Pag sinabi mo namang invertebrates, in. From the word itself, in, ibig sabihin walang buto. Okay, invertebrates. The classification system has groupings called pila. Okay, classes, orders, families, genera, and species. And we have the fury, which is milk-producing animals, are also called, uh, also are all in the class mammalia. Okay, which is one that milk-producing or has a mammary gland or or odor, it called mammalia, mama, mama, mammalians or mammals. We have here another summary. We have here so members within a species. Okay, uh, members within a species can make produce fertile offspring. They can produce up fertile offspring that is a species and subgroups within species we have include breeds races and varieties pag sinabi mo ng breeds it talks about the uh about the plumage yung mga ganun yung uh, sizes shape no anong breed yan siya so yun pag sinabi mo naman, pag sinabi mo naman races yung saan siya originated yung mga uh, dugo niya dugo niya yan. maganda ba yung type ng ano yung ancestors niya so that is races and varieties naman there are a lot of varieties of uh uh, bur uh no, animals okay so we will talk that and we have another term we have strain also and strain in poultry okay so yan pag usapan niya siya when we already reach poultry production okay let's have a quiz number one okay let's answer try natin magsagot sagot sa inyo and then there is a chat box you can have it you can write your answers okay let's have number one true or false is this name right correctly true or false Okay. So, sorry sa magot. Anong sagot niyo? Okay, false, false, false. Okay. Let's call a uh, participant. Let's say let's call participant. Okay, para makita natin yung ano. Okay, this is the first uh, ito lang po yung ano ha, yung free I amin, mean, yung free ano uh, discussion namin tonight kasi the next the the the, the next the next this uh, the next online class will be Hindi na po namin siya i-expose sa, ano, sa public. Okay? That will be privately 
um, sa student ko na lang po, sa anong official class ko na lang. Yun. Ngayon lang po ito, kasi sample ko lang po sa inyo of, uh, of how I I discuss the, ano, the, tawag dyan, kung paano po ba, paano ako magturo. Para if you like it, so, if you like how I teach, so, you can, you can decide po, ganun. And you have your, yeah, you have, kasi alam ko yung iba nag-screenshot, nakikita ko kasi sa, ano, sa camera. And then you have, okay, four, so let's call, okay. Let's call Eric De Leon. Ayan. Ay, Sir Eric pala. Sorry. So let's say Sir Eric De Leon. Bakit, bakit falls? Meron namang Lose capital letter or sir. meron namang small letter? Ano? Ma mali yung pagkakasulat. Mali yung pagkakasulat. Ano pala dapat? Scientific name. Ano pala, ano pala dapat? Um, hindi siya naka-italic. Then, um, hindi naka-uppercase yung ano. Yung T dapat naka-uppercase yun, then lower yung T. Alin ba dyan yung genus? Alin ba dyan yung genus? Ha? Sino si genus dyan? Saka sino si species? Yung asa ba ba, sir? Yung genus? Yeah, sige nga, Michelle. Sige nga, Michelle. Sagutin mo nga. Ah, sige. Yes, yeah, ikaw na lang. Sige, sige. Kasi I, I called your name already. False po yung sagot mo. And then, um, kaya nga, tinatanong ko, bakit siya false? And then, sinabi mo na, hindi kasi naka, ano sir, hindi kasi naka-capital letter yung tapos hindi siya naka-italic. Kaya tinatanong kita, saan ba dyan yung genus? Saan din dyan yung species? Tige nga. Saan dyan yung um, genus? Saan din dyan yung species? Okay, sige nga. O, Dindo. Sige nga, Dindo. Yung genus dyan, sir, is yung... Sige nga, Dindo. Ha? Huh? Anong genus dyan? Volpicola, sir. Saan ang genus dyan? Vol Volpicola? Yes, sir. So, dapat na capital letter, ganun. Yes, sir. Capital letter. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, the correct answer here is false. Bakit false? Kasi, we have here genus. Yung genus natin is Trichosaurus. Okay? Genus Trichosaurus. And then, So, yeah. Number two, yeah, yeah. what do you need to rearrange, to change? So, you have here, you know, rearrange these groups. Ayun, na. Yun, dapat mo i-change. We have T, ito yung arrangement, and then we have Volki, Vol, Volpicola. Okay, next, we have number two, rearrange these groups from the biggest to the smallest. Or, rearrange mo yung groups from the biggest to smallest. Uh, disregard mo tong letter A. Okay, so, kasi baka hindi kayo familiar with the uh, brand of, ano, cars and motors we have here letter b let's proceed to letter b okay how will you how will you um organize this or classify this one from biggest to smallest taking it tawagin ko name <clears throat> rosalie lumingkit yan ito yung nauna kong nakita sa aking ano Yan, Rosalie Lumingkit. Okay, how will you how will you rearrange from biggest to smallest ang classification ng letter B? Sige nga. Good evening, sir. Can you dictate good it? Evening, yes, okay, good evening. Good okay, evening. Okay, so, uh, saan tayo magsastart? Let's start with Philom. Philo. Magsa-start? Pailum po. Pailum. Pailum? 
which are divided into class, orders, with the family. Wala ata yung screen ko. Wala ba yung screen ko? Wait lang po. Sorry, hindi na play slides ko. Ayan, so let's do it. Sige nga, Rosalie, let's start with, sabi mo ba yung, ano sabi mo, Pailum? Pailum. Yes po, Pailum. Sunod? Class. Class. Mm-hmm, then sunod? Order po. Order. Then family. And then? Kingdom. Kingdom. I was family, genus, and species. Saan niya yung si Kingdom? Phylum, class, orders, family, Kingdom. Kingdom, genus, Saan pa na dapat nakalagay si Kingdom? Next po dun sa family. Family, Kingdom, genus, and then species. So we have your answers, okay? So you have Kingdom, Phylum, Class, Order, Family, Genus, and last, we have Species. O, yun. Sinabi ko na yung kanina eh. Diba? As I told you about this one already. You have first, you have Kingdom. Yan naging isip kasi Kingdom. Animal Kingdom. Ayun. And then you have Phylum. Okay? Or Phyla. Okay, we have also class. Kung class yan, mga class mamalian, ganun. We have order, pwede nga rodensya, ganun. We have family. Anong family siya? And then genus. And then lastly, we have species. Okay? Kasi yung species naman yung nagpapadami. Nag-repopulation for ano. Nagpapadami ng mga lahi nila. Okay? Okay, thank you so much, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Yes, Michelle, you are raising your hand. You can put your hand down na. Do you want to answer number one? Do you want to answer number letter A of number two? Ito yung mga ano ko nahirapan din dyan eh. Kasi I have my own ano kasi way of ano. We have next topic is the cell. Okay, introduction of animal science. Our topic is the cell. Okay, so this is what we call the parts of the cell. We also know we all know that the animal cells are typically of the eukaryotic cell. So, what does it mean by eukaryotic cells? Can anyone give me a, uh, ano, uh, idea of what is a eukaryotic cell? Can anyone give me an idea what is a eukaryotic cell? What is your karyotic cell? Hello. Class, what is your karyotic cell? Hello, Karun. What is your karyotic cell? Can anyone answer my question? What is your karyotic cell? Wala? Wala makasagot? <laughs> okay. <laughs> What is the difference between eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells? Okay? Eukaryotic cells, those are cells that containing a membrane. Okay? That containing a membrane or bound organelles. And they are actually uh, the basis for both unicellular and multicellular organisms. Okay? And... When you talk about prokaryotic cells, naman, they do not have any membrane, okay? And then bound organ, wala silang bound organelles, and then then and are always part of unicellular organisms, okay? 
So, ano ibig sabihin ng prokaryote? They are, pag sabi mong prokaryote, they are single-celled. Okay? They are single-celled. That is prokaryote. So, ano example ng prokaryotes? Okay? Example ng prokaryotes, we have bacteria, we have archaea, right? E. coli. So, pag sinabi mo namang, ano, that is prokaryotes, no? Pag, uh, pag eukaryotes naman, no? We have example, protease, we have fungi, plants, and animals, no? So, diyan. So, all prokaryotes and eukaryotes cells have Ah, uh, yun. Magkaiba. We have, may plus, they have plasma membrane. Okay, and then, what are the difference, no? Yun na, sinabi ko kanina, no? So, containing membrane, and then bound organelles are the basis for unicellular and multicellular. And then, we have here, okay, animal cells are typical of the eukaryotic, eukaryotic cells. So, enclosed by a plasma membrane and containing a membrane-bound nucleus. Yan. And organelles. So unlike the eukaryotic cells of plants and fungi. So magkaiba lang yung uh, eukaryotic ng plants at fungi. So we have also, kasi yung sa plants, they have uh, cell wall, right? Sa fungi, they have unicellular, okay? And you have here, animal cells do not have a cell wall. No, they don't have cell wall. But they have, what? In animal cells, they have plasma. Membrane, no? They do not have cell walls, but they have plasma membrane. So this feature was lost in the distant past by the single-celled organism that gave rise to the kingdom Animalia. So most cells, both animal and plant, range in size between 1 and 100 micrometers and are thus visible only with the aid of microscope or electron microscope, Okay. So we have here the parts of the uh, cells. So you need to familiarize your animal cells. We have uh, mitochondria, uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum, the nucleus, nuclear uh, pores. You have plasma membrane, nucleus, nuclear envelopes. You should be familiar with these parts of uh, cells. So you should familiarize yung parts ng cells. You should familiarize with that, ha? Mag, mag, isa slow ako magsalita para nawawala ako sa focus. Ayan. So you should be familiarized with its parts. Okay? So I give you time to, I give you minutes to familiarize this one. Saan nakalagay si endoplasmic, si Golgi apparatus. Okay? Bigyan ko kayo ng time to um, familiarize. Okay? Just familiarize it. Because after that, there will be a quiz. Okay, so hopefully you familiarize already the parts of the cells. Okay, so let's have our next slides. Okay, so let's have first the uh, history of the cells or definition muna tayo. So we have the animal kingdom is unique among eukaryotic organisms because most animal tissues are bound together in extracellular matrix by a triple helix. Okay, triple helix. We will tackle this one. We already reached animal genetics and breeding and genetics of protein known as collagen. Ano yung, col yung collagen kasi? It is uh, coated in the DNA. No, that's why it's have a triple helix. Actually, the double helix that is DNA. When it is already coated by a protein, no, that, that's what we call collagen. In the double helix, that's what we call triple helix. Okay. So plant and fungal cells are bound together in tissues of aggregations by other molecules such as pectin. Okay, this one. Yeah, plant and fungal. They, uh, when we have already crop science, I will be tackling. I will also. I, I, I will repeat to tackle to ano, to discuss to you the ano. Sorry, I will repeat to discuss to you the uh, cells uh, related to our living to plant and fungi cells. 
Okay, so we have also most animals are diploid. Pag sinabi mong diploid, it is a whole, which is 50-50, okay? Or uh, the works of mitosis. Okay, meaning that their chromosomes exist in the homologous pairs. So they exist in the homologous pairs, 50, that will give you 100%. And different chromosomal ploides are also, yan, chromosomal, chromosomes, yan. However, uh, known to be, known to occasionally occur. So we, we will tackle this one when we already reach animal breeding and genetics. So the proliferation of animal cells occurs in a variety of ways. So there are ways, no? in the, the the process of the animal cells we have in instances of sexual reproduction okay that use uh via process what we call meiosis when you talk meiosis it is the uh, talk about the reproduction sexual reproduction can be used in sexual reproduction so it's first necessary to the haploid daughter cells but it's being haploid so we have diploid right and we have haploid which is 25 25 25 25 percent right or gametes Okay, so when you talk about gamete, it is ovum and uh, spermatozoa. Okay, so they are not fertile yet. Okay, so it means that it talks about ovum and spermatozoa. Okay, so it can be produced. Okay, so two haploid cells then fuse to form a diploid zygote. So pag sinabi mong zygote, that is already a fertilized egg. Okay, that is a fertilized egg. There is a fertilized ovum, uh, an ovum that has already a sperm, a spermatozoa. Okay, so zygote, another term for zygote is OO. I uh, no, not, not, sorry, sorry. So we have zygote here. So we have another term is gametogenesis. Okay, gametogenesis. You know, ano? Gametogenesis. Okay, you know, another term on zygotes. Then which develops into a new organisms as is as its cells divide and multiply. Okay, so um, sa spermatozoa naman, may term naman tayo tinatawag na oogenesis. Okay? Yun. So, as we go on to our uh, genetic, breeding and genetics, yun. Malalaman yan, oogenesis. And we have the, the, the history of the cells. So, the earliest fossil evidence of animal dates from Vindian period. Saan nagsimula sa Vindian period? That was 60, 60 to 554 million years ago. With colony type creatures that left traces of their soft bodies in shallow water sediments, so there are um, traces on the creatures. No, no, sa lang ang panahon. Now that's what other uh, were uh, and the curiosity, no, to the people in a uh, year like uh, in the Vindian period. So they are they they usually uh, that's why they started to have the study of cells. No, the first mass extinction in the, that period but during the cambrian period no sa pag cambrian period there were an explosion of which followed an explosion of new forms began the evolutionary radiation that produced most of the major groups of phyla known today so we have vertebrates that is known today animals with backbones no yung panahon ng cambrian period diyan na identify yung vertebrates and invertebrates okay animals with backbones are known to have occurred until the early Ordovician period, which is 505, 538 million years ago, where the cells were discovered in 1665 by British scientist known as Robert Hooke. So Robert Hooke nakita niya ang, na there is a cells in the uh, plant, no? So ang tawag niya dun sa cell na yun ay dead cell, okay? Patay na cell. So sabi niya, ah, there, there, was, there is a dead cell in the plant so that is they call it this dead cell it's robert who so he's the father of uh, cells okay who first they observed or discovered them in this in his uh, crude by today's standards we had 17th centuries optical microscope so yun dinagamit yung optical microscope so who in fact who coined the term cell so yung nag, uh, nag term ng cell because she, he he was the one uh he was the one observed you know that there was a cell in the plant in a biological context, when he described the microscopic structure of cork-like, no, para daw siyang cork-like, no, parang cork-like, tiny, ang, ang, ang shape, no, ang, ang, this pag-describe niya sa uh, cells. And then bay room or monk cells, yun, sabi niya. And then illustrated, you have, in the uh, figure two, you will see that, are a pair of fibroblast deer skin, yan, cells that have been labeled with fluorescent probes, yung ginamit nila fibroblast on their skin to label a uh, fluorescent probes and photograph in the microscope 
to reveal their internal structures yun. Connect nila yung tissues. And then the, the nuclei are stained with a red probe that is called use. No, kailangan stain yung nuclei para makita what type of cells inside. We have also while the good tattoos and microfilament, actin network are stained green and blue. So, yan. Later on, we will, uh, we'll discuss this on uh, parts of cells. So, we have respectively, the microscope has been fundamental tool in the field of cell biology and is often used to observe living cells in culture. As far as remember, we have Robert Hooke who um, discovered or observed the dead cell and we have Antone, Anton, Antone de Barre, yeah, Antone, Anton de Barre who discovered that there is a living cell. Okay, sabi niya, living cell ang meron doon sa plants. Okay, kay Robert Hooke, it's dead cell. So we have um, Antone de Barre which is the living cell. Okay. So we have uh, the various different um, types of uh, cells in the body of uh, animals. So we have uh, this one. Example here, we have um, egg cell, ovum, yeah, and that is egg cell. We have this uh, sperm cell, we have chick cell, bone cell, we have a cell from the intestinal lining, yung sa ating small intestine, so there is a cell. And then we have here white blood cells, then red blood cells, and we have nerve cells, which is in the nerve tissues, and we have smooth muscle cells and connected tissue cells. But let's focus now to the parts of the uh, cells. So we have first, number one is centrioles. So centrioles, yan, we have centrioles. Where are centrioles here? Here, this one, this is what we call centrioles, yung parang tinatawag nating uh, stargazing, no? or asters. Yan. So yan, it's centrioles are self-replicating organelles. No, it's a self-replicate kusa nagre-replicate made up of nine bundles. Made up of nine bundles. Ilan bundles? Nine of microtubules. Ilan nine yan? Saan yan sila makikita? We have here um nine bundles, no? So here we have one Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, one, two, three, four. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that is what we call a bundles of microtubules, and are found only in animals. No, and they are, um, they appear to help in organizing cell division. Anong trabaho niya to help for cell division, but aren't essential to the process. Hindi naman siya masadong importante for in the process. Okay, so we have here centrioles play a notable, notable role. Notable lang siya, but they are not essential. In cell division during interface of an animal cell. So the centrioles and other components of the centrosome are duplicated. Though scientists are not yet sure how this duplication takes place. So at first, the two pairs of centrioles remain in close proximity to each other. But as mitosis initiates, yeah, the mitosis, which is the replacing, replacing pag may sugat, it is the work of the mitosis to uh, repair the ano, na, na, nasira nga tissue, yan. Yan. So, the, the original centrosome divides and the pairs are split so, no? uh, so that one set of centrioles are located in each of the new microtubule organize, organizing centers. Yan. These are centers that radiate microtubules in star shape. As you can see there, there's a star shape. No? Yan, para siyang star. Okay. Star shape clusters known as asters. No? It is known as asters. This one is known as asters. And we have as the asters move to opposing poles, the cells microtubules with the help of centrioles become organized into a simple spindle shape of uh, formation expands the cells. So, so we all know that centrioles is made up of nine bundles of microtubules, and we have three microtubules triplet. So we have here microtubules triplet. We have one, two, three, and make up of uh yeah three, and then each each bundle is has uh, each bundle has three microtubules so bawat bundle may three, may three microtubules we have and they are composed of nine um, bundles no we have one bundles two bundles three four five six seven eight and nine bundles okay you have next you have cilia okay next we have cilia and flagella for single celled eukaryotes no that is uh, uh cilia and flagella okay single celled eukaryotes cilia we have cilia yung buhok and we have here the flagella are essential for the locomotion important uh, locomotion and individual organisms 
Okay, so daan saan dyan yung cilia. This one is the cilia, yung parang buhok-buhok. It's a finger-like. Ayan, that is cilia. Okay, so in multicellular organism, cilia functions to move fluid. It will move the fluid or materials pass on the immobile cell, no? As well as moving cell or group of cells. Hala, screenshot talaga. Ayan. Yeah, next we have the respiratory tract and humans <laughs> in line with cilia that keep inhaled, yan. Uh, in respiratory tract of the humans, no, in line. So, we have the cilia. Diba, yung sa ating ilong, diba, meron tayong buhok-buhok dyan. So, we have cilia and uh, keep inhale the dust. No, siya din yung naginhail ng, ng, ng dust. Sa loob yun ha, hindi yung buhok na sa labas. That, that, that's not cilia. Okay? Yung sa loob talaga, yung sa loob ng tissues natin. We have dust, smog, yan. And then potentially harmful microorganisms from entering the lungs. Okay? So, among the other tasks, we have the cilia also generate water. Direct water, currents to carry food and oxygen pass the gills of clams and transport food through the digestive systems of snails. Okay, it's snails. Okay, so it's snails using um cilia. Okay, no, na dadaan sa gills niya. Okay, so yun, to digest for the digestive system. And we have flagella are found uh, primarily on gametes. Okay, it's found in the gametes. So yung mga... Uh, Ayan, sa ovum, and then sa sperm cells, ganun. But create the water currents necessary for respiration, no? Na magkakaroon, magkakaroon siya ng water and cilia for respiration and circulation in sponges and colon traits as well. So for single cell, you have eukaryotes, you have cilia and flagella are essential, very important for the locomotion of individual organisms. Ayan, so we have protozoans belonging to the phylum. Yeah, protozoans that is belonging to Phylum ciliopora are covered with cilia. So we have uh, covered with cilia. And then while flagella are characteristics of the protozoan group, which is musty, uh, protozoan group, which is mastigopora. So this is an example of cilia and flagella structures. So in, this one is what we call the cilia or the cilia. So this, yung kulay red na makikita ninyo, ang tawag sa buo na yan is what we call the basal body. So inside of that, there is what we call, ayan, tasan tumastan, dumadaan mga nutrients and uh, magkakaroon ng water absorption and magdalabas ng waters. Okay? We have next, we have endoplasmic reticulum or ER. We have two types of endoplasmic reticulum. We have soft and um, rough endoplasmic reticulum. Okay? Mag magkaiba yung purpose ng dalawa. Uh, smooth plus smooth and rough endoplasmic reticulum. So, you have the endoplasmic reticulum is network of sacs. Pag sinabi mong network of sacs, sacs, sabi sabihin, Uh, magka, meron siya malang butas-butas na kung saan lumala, uh, dun, dun dumadaan yung nutrients that manufactures across the manufactures, no, ang gawain niya is manufactures, always remember dyan, that processes and transports chemical compounds. So, ibig sabihin, uh, dadaan muna siya, like say, like say yung sa company, parang siyang, parang siyang EQ, uh, quality control, as QC pala, QC, QC na lang tuloy, QC or quality control. Dadaan muna siya sa ano, quality control before proceeding to transport transportation. For use inside and outside of the cell, it is connected to the double-layered nuclear envelope, no? providing a pipeline, pipeline between the nucleus and the cytoplasm. So that is what we call the uh, endoplasmic reticulum. Okay? So next is we have Yes, another uh, definition of uh, endoplasmic reticulum. So, the process, process siya, di ba? As what I have said earlier, it is a process, uh, manufactures, or a process, and transport a wide variety of biochemical compounds for use of uh, for use inside and outside of the cell. So, consequently, there are many of the proteins found in the cisternal. Yeah, cisternal. A space of the endoplasmic reticulum lumen. So we have the lumen. As you can see there, there is a convoluted and complex range of lumen. Okay. Are there only uh, transiently as they pass on their way to other locations? And that's all. There are other proteins, however, uh, were, were, are targeted to constantly remain in the lumen. So are known as to be endoplasmic reticulum, the resident proteins. No, They are going to stay in the lumen. No where the resident of the proteins, okay? So we have two types of endoplasmic reticulum. So we have the rough and the, uh, uh, we have the rough, uh, two basic kinds of endoplasmic reticulum. We have the rough and the smooth 
no in the surface of the rough endoplasmic reticulum as you can see there in the slides no in the presentation it is covered with ribosomes okay it is covered with ribosomes makita niyo mga dots 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 na kulay dilaw that is covered by ribosomes we know that ribosomes were the um production of protein okay so giving it Given it, uh, given it a bumpy appearance when viewed through the microscope. As you can see in the microscope, no meron talaga mga dots, dots. So that is the work of the ribosomes. Okay, so this type of endoplasmic reticulum, yung uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum, is involved mainly with the production and processing of proteins that will be exported or secreted from the cell. So yun, that is a uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum. So, it is contained of ribosomes. But you know that ribosomes is a symbol of amino acids into protein units. Amino acids is the basic unit of protein. So, which are transported into rough endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so for, for further processing. So, these proteins may be either trans, transmembrane proteins, ayan, so which became embedded in the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum. So, yun. And uh, we have also smooth, no, endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so what is the work of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum? So the work of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is, uh, in most cells, they are is uh, in most cells is much less, no, in sa ibang cells no much less yung uh, smooth retic endoplasmic reticulum, less extensive than the rough endoplasmic reticulum, and it's sometimes alternate, alternatively termed transitional, no. So, transitional, ibig sabihin, uh, nagko-convert siya. Nagko-convert. So, smooth endoplasmic reticulum is chiefly involved in, however, with the production of lipids and fats. No? In the production of lipid and fats. So, kung si Raph is in the production of uh, protein uh, with the ribosome, so we have also smooth endoplasmic reticulum, which is in the lipids and or uh, lipids or fats. No? And also, the building blocks for the carbohydrates metabolism, yung glucose, no, the simple sugar, and then and the detox detoxification of drugs and poisons. So therefore, in some specialized cells, as as that are occupied, no, chiefly in lipid and carbohydrate metabolism, as you as we have observed and we have already discussed in the brain and muscles, no, yung carbohydrate metabolism and also the detoxification that can be found in the liver. Okay, and in the plasmic uh, smooth. Uh, smooth endoplasmic reticulum is much more extensive and is crucial to cellular functions. Okay, and then it also plays role in various cellular activities through its storage for calcium and involvement in calcium metabolism. Okay, yeah. So that is what we call uh, smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, next. Okay, we have on the X, we have endosom endosomes and endocytosis. Endosomes are membrane-bound vesicles. Pag sabi yung vesicles, yung parang bilog-bilog. Yan, ito, this one. This one is vesicles, actually. Yan, that is vesicles. Okay? Bilog-bilog na parang bowl-bowl. Yan, so you have formed via a complex family of processes collectively as endocytosis. Okay? What is endocytosis? Okay, so found in the cytopl cytoplasm of uh, virtually every animal cell. So the basic mechanism of endocytosis is the reserve, the reverse of what occurs during exocytosis, no? Or cellular secretion. It involves the invagination, folding inward of a cells from plasma membrane to surround micromolecules or other matter diffusing through the extracellular fluid. Okay, so we have this one. This one is what we call the um, endosome. So we have endocytosis, no? Na, na sa labas. And this one is what they call the process of meiosis. Yan, pago, mitosis, pago, pagocytosis, perocytosis, endocytosis. Yan. Pag-uusapan din natin yan. Okay, we have receptors. Yan. It's not that very important as long as you are, you are familiar with the, ano, the process. And we have also the next, we have the Golgi Apparatus. No? Golgi Apparatus and Distribution and Shipping Department. No? Siya yung di shipping department. Kung mga sa company, siya yung shipping department. Uh, for the cells chemical products, no, it modifies proteins, we modify new proteins and fats built in the endoplasmic reticulum and prepares them for the export. Ibig sabihin, sila yung nasa labas na, nasa storage to the outside of the cell. 
So the work of the Golgi apparatus, also called Golgi body or Golgi complex, and found universally in both plant and animals. So it's typically comprised of a series of five, eight cup size. We have here. There's a lot of back vesicle here. Yeah. This one is called. This one is what we call lumen. Okay. So palabas na siya. That is what we call Golgi apparatus. Okay, five shape membrane cover sacs as what we call cisterne. Yeah, we have the cisterne here. This one is cisterne one, cisterne, cisterne here. Yeah, and that looks uh something like stuck or deflated balloons, no? I mean, like stuck sort of yeah. And some insular flagellates, however, as many 60 cisterne may convey combined to make up the Golgi apparatus. Similarly, the number of Golgi bodies in a varies according to the, its functions. Yeah. Intermediate, intermediate filaments are a very broad class of fibrous proteins that play an important role as both structural functional elements of the cytoskeleton. This is a cytoskeleton, yung kulay green nakikita ninyo. Parang it's a cytoskeleton, cytoskeleton. Ranging in size from 8 to 12 nanometers. So intermediate filaments functions as tension-bearing tension -bearing elements to help maintain cell shape and rigidity. Oh, we have here ang tali, no? Parang siyang tail. So, that is what we call a intermediate um, filaments. Okay? So, next is we have lysosomes. So, ano yung work ni lysosomes? Lysosomes here, the main functions of these microbodies is digestion. Okay? Lysosomes break. May break ni lysosomes ang uh, down cellular waste products, no? Into the, 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 the waste products and debris from outside the cells into simple compounds para magamit pa siya. So which are transferred to the cytoplasm as new cell building, ginagamit as new cell building materials yung uh, tinatawag nating um, lysosomes. Yung ginagawa niya is to break down cellular waste products and debris from outside the cells into small, small simple compounds para gamitin siya to build another um, cells, okay, or another materials or organelles in the cells. In this regard, the lysosomes recycle yan. In tabaw niya talaga is recycle. They recycle niya yung mga waste, no? And mga debris. The cells organic material in a process known as autopagy. Autopagy is the process where the um, breaking down of the uh, waste, cellular waste and debris and um, uh, converting the recycle into uh, materials or organelles used for the making of another cells. So lysosomes break down cellular waste, yes, micro fats, products, fats, carbohydrates, proteins, and other macro molecules into simple compounds, which are the transferred, then transferred back into the cytoplasm and new building materials. Excuse me. So lysosomes are often bad. No, oh, they are often bad. Yung panalang yung parang ano siya? Yeah, they are often bad by a lipid layer. Okay. So we have here para siyang nangka, right? Para siyang jackfruit ang forma. Okay, but from the from membrane from the membrane of the Golgi apparatus. So, but in some cases they develop gradually from late endosomes. So, which are vesicles? Okay, vesicles that carry materials brought into the cell by a process known endocytosis. So later on we will talk about endocytosis. Okay. And we have microfilaments. Microfilaments are solid rods. They are solid rods. Malamig talaga ang ano. Solid rods and made of globular proteins called actin. Okay? So it's a, uh, it's a microfilament solid rods that made of globular protein. It's called actin. These filaments are primarily structural in function and are an important component of the cytoskeleton. So very important para maging solid yung cytoskeleton. So very important ang microfilaments. And then common all common to all eukaryotic cells, no? That is common to eukaryotic cells. These filaments are primarily structural and functions and are important component of the cytoskeleton. Yan, along with microtubules and often intermediate filaments. And we have here in association with myosin. Yan, association with myosin. Microfilaments help to generate the forces used in cellular reactions and basic cell movements. Okay, this filament also enable dividing cells to pinch off into two cells. So, siya yung, yung we have the filaments, we have the myosin or the microfilaments, siya yung nagpipinch off. Example, ganyan, e, buo pa siya yung uh, 
cell and then yung nagpipinch off para mag-divide sila, dividing the cell is the microfilaments by the association of myosin. Okay? So, yun. And the cells that are involved in amoeboid movements, no? ano, move, ano ito sa movements na yan? That is amoeboid movements of certain types of cells. Yun. Ang ginagawa niya is para mag-divide, no? So, pinipinch off ng microfilaments with the, uh, so say, with the association of uh, myosin para mag-divide ang cells in a proper way. So, we are, we are the, here we are the microfilaments which are the solid rods who control the, 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 the division of the cells. Okay? So we have microtubules, uh, these straight hollow cylinders yan, are found throughout the cytoplasm of all eukaryotic cells. Yeah, So prokaryotes don't have them, so the prokaryotes doesn't have a microtubules and carry out a variety of functions. Okay, they are carry out a variety of functions ranging from transport to structural support. So we have microtubules which are about 25 nanometers in diameter. It is formed by the cytoskeleton again. Yeah. So that's very important. That's oh no. We have that gives structure and shape to a cell. Yeah. So you be getting structure and shape ng cell. And also serve as conveyor belts. No conveyor belts and add other organelles throughout the cytoplasm. Here comes you the five microfilaments which is the one who pinch and divide the cell, controlling the division of the cell. And then after controlling the division of the cell, here comes the microtubules, who is the one controlling or gives structure and shape to a cell. So that is microtubules. Okay, it is used. I uh, is known as the conveyor belts, no conveyor belts. Yung, yung belt, di ba kita control yung shape ng katawan natin para hindi lumabas yung bilbil, yon or hindi <laughs> nat bilbil. <laughs> Atag jan, uh, para hindi maglose yung shorts natin. Or pants. We have microtondria. This one is very common. Microtondria are oblong shape. They are oblong shape or known as bean shape. Okay, bean. Yung parang beans ang kanyang forma, right? They are look like a beans. Okay. It's a bean shape organelles that are found in the cytoplasm. Ano yung cytoplasm? Yung kulay blue na nakikita nyo na liquid, yung kulay blue dyan. That is what we call cytoplasm, yung liquid-liquid. For every eukaryotic cell. So in the animal cell, they are the main power generators. No, siya yung main power generators. Kung sa computer yan, siya yung CPU. Okay? Siya yung uh, motherboard, motherboard tawag. Motherboard siya. Converting oxygen and nutrients into energy or also known as converting a chemical compound known as ATP. Adronisine triphosphate. Okay? So you have, it's the chemical energy currency of the cell that powers the cell metabolic activity. So the process is called aerobic respiration. We talk about aerobic respiration. It means that it needs an energy oxygen in order to produce energy, no? Or ATP. No, and this is the reason animals breathe oxygen without mitochondria. Okay, so always remember that eukaryotic can only live if there is an oxygen. Prokaryotic can live both oxygen and uh, non-oxygen or anaerobic, okay? Anaerobic sila. Aerobic and anaerobic sila. Okay, you have singular and mitochondrion and then higher animals would likely not exist because their cells would only be able to obtain energy for anaerobic respiration. Tao, yan. Aerobic yung tao. Okay? So we have in the absence of oxygen. Yung pag, uh, pag sabi mong anaerobic respiration, that is the absence of uh, oxygen. Okay? So a process much less efficient than aerobic respiration. So pag sabi mong ATP, that is the conversion of oxygen and nutrients into energy by mitochondria. Mitochondria. So pag uh, may nakita kayong sumasayo and then madaming energy, ah, grabe, ang dami niyang nag-work talaga ang kanyang mitochondria. Charat, ganun. So, you know already, ibig sabihin, your brain is processing already. Every time that I'm going to, uh, siyempre, I am a dancer actually, I am a dance instructor. So, every time I dance, so parang mas madali lang ako mauhaw, madali ako ma... Madali ako mauhaw pagkatapos kong sumay. Uh, kahit nagsasayo ako or magkatapos kasi man, wala akong mauhaw, tapos nagpa-funting ako kasi ganyan, Kung sa katanda na siguro, kasi nag-stop ako ng sayaw, magsayaw. So, here comes my mitochondria, no? parang nababaguhan ulit no? sa pagsasayaw. So, yun, parang nahirapan akong maghinga, magpapanting ako, okay? Sa Bisaya pa, nagahapo. Ayan. So, I, I, I need water kasi my mitochondria is needing a water para mag-process siya ng more energy, para hindi ako hapuin o hindi ako... Yun. Kung dancer ka, no, if you are a dancer, do not do not stop 
dancing because if you stop dancing mapapares ka sa akin you will um uh, experience arthritis you are you are going to experience pag uh, ano yung paghihirap na short breathing ganun and at the same time ano uh, pag sumayaw ka na hirapan ka so ando pa rin yung malambot na katawan pero mahirapan ka pa rin mag yun parang ilang min- segundo lang pwede mong masaya or ilang minuto lang kahit nga pa zumba zumba mahirapan ka na and then your body will experience a lot of uh, inflammation you know what's inflammation yung pagbabara ng dugo no um yun na experience ka pag mamanhid also sa aking katawan pag hindi ka mag-exercise no so you need to exercise if you are dancers you really need to, to exercise okay and you have nucleus no pag nucleus naman no that is what they call the uh, where the uh, ayan sa center nucleus the nucleus is highly specialized organ that serves as the information processing and administrative centers of the cells so it is the basic unit of the cell it is known as nucleus or nucleus yeah the basic unit ang pinakamaliit talaga is nucleus okay pinakamaliit is nucleus okay Uh, nucleus is the one in uh, information no serves as the information and you know, process new information no uh, and administrative centers of the cell so the organelle no this organelle has two major functions no first is for hereditary material we will talk sorry we will tackle that when we already reach genetics with the genetics and also our dna and it our coordinates the cell activities which include growth, intermediary, metabolism, protein synthesis, and reproduction. No? Akala ko sa walang protein ang nucleus. Meron po. Meron. So that's a four cell division. Generally, this is only one nucleus per cell. So in one cell, there's only one nucleus. But there are exemptions such as the cells of slime molds. Are you familiar with slime molds? Okay. And uh, siphonous groups of algae, yung green algae. And we have simply our one-celled organisms of prokaryotes like the bacteria and cyanobacteria. Now, this one is familiar. And then don't have a nucleus. Yeah, they don't have a nucleus. We have the, yeah. We have thymus molds, wala silang nucleus, uh, siphonyls, uh, and we have prokaryotes. No? And uh, cyanobacteria, they don't have nucleus. In these organisms, all of the cells, informations, and other functions are dispersed throughout the cytoplasm. So this is a nucleus, okay? It is um, covered with a nuclear envelope, nuclear envelope, and it has a chromatin, nucleus, and nuclear pore. So we will tackle that one by one. What is in the nucleus? Number one, we have the chromatin. The chromatin and chromosomes, okay? So packed inside the nucleus of every human cell. So it will, it packs inside the nucleus for every human cell it's nearly six feet of dna no? it's six feet in dna and which is divided into 46 individual molecules okay so yan for tao sa tao ito, it is for human 46 individual molecules we have here one for uh, each chromosome each and each about 1.5 inches long and packing all this material into microscopic cells, nucleus in an extraordinary fit of packaging. For DNA, two functions, no, it can be crammed in, in the nucleus like a ball string, and this one. So this one is the DNA helix, or the double helix, the DNA helix. And then if, if it is already coated with the uh, protein, so that is called triple helix, okay? So instead, it is combined with proteins and organized into a piece of precise compact structures a dense string like fiber called chromatin. If we already reach animal genetics and breeding, animal breeding in genetics, sorry, animal breeding in genetics, you will know loose, loosei, yan, or lucus, and alleles. You will know alleles. Okay? Makikilala nyo yan sila. Yung mga, ang pasudo pang yan. Yan. Makikilala nyo yan sila. Okay, so this is what we call a chromosomes, no? Chromosomes. What are you going to do now? You are going to search for the chromosomes of livestock. So you have chromosomes ng swine, chromosomes ng uh, horses, uh, kambing, poultry. Yeah, mga chromosomes. May ibang chromosomes ng quail, ng chicken, no? May iba-ibang chromosomes yan sila. So you need to research on that because that's a very important thing, okay? Baka lumabas sa board exam, at least hindi kayo zero. And that is actually basic in agriculture. Dapat alamin nyo yun. Okay, so you have the chromatin. Chromatin, ibig sabihin, it is um the, the uh, yun pa yung hindi pa na, ano, hindi pa siya na process or hindi pa siya na process information. Saan nakukuha yung information? 
First is genotypic. Genotypic is sa genes ng uh, yung ancestors mo, ka, mga ano uh, sa kalunuan mo, ganon. Pag phenotypic naman, that is nakukuha yung information or napoprocess information from the environment. No, kanon nakikita mo sa environment, ganun, di ba? Uh, that's true that if um, hindi po yan sa genes yung bakla at tomboy. Yung bakla at tomboy, dyan po ay, yan, yan po siya ay phenotypic. Okay? Phenotypic material po yan. Kasi uh, God only created men and women. Male and female. Okay? So, yun. So, the genes that we have in the world, actually, no offense those, ano ha, no offense, so, ako ganun din man. No offense, no offense to those that have problems when it comes to gender identity. Okay, so, ang genes kasi is, ang genetic material kasi is, two, dalawa lang talaga yan. You have the male and female. Okay, sa so, genetic ng male, genes ng male, and genes ng female. So, yung bakla tsaka tomboy, that is phenotypic material. Kasi kung paglaki niya, isa po lalaki, anak mo, and then paglaki niya, uh, naging, naging babae yung ano, yung uh, galaw, naging babae yung heart, naging babae yung environment. Kasi yung environment yan eh. Kung ano yung paglaki niya, ano yung nakasanayan niya na gawain, ano yung sininakahalubilo niya, yun. Uh, yun na-apply niya. And that is phenotypic material. Yung paglaki ng bata, dapat sa pag-growth ng bata, if lalaki, dapat din na-expose siya dun sa mga lalaking grupo. Hindi siya na-expose dun sa babaeng grupo. Kasi pag if you have, eh, tapos lalo na ngayon, example, let's say may anak ang lalaki, tapos there's a lot of titas in the house. So yun, syempre mga titas, ginagawa ang babae si uh, San. Di ba? So, beware of that. That is phenotypic material. So paglaki ng bata yun, madadala niya yun. Kasi it's phenotypic material. It's already processed the information inside the uh, gen, uh, inside the chromosome or the genetics. Uh, the chromosome, the chromosome rather. So ngayon, pag magkaanak si, magkaanak si bakla, example, let's say, uh, yung bakla is nagkaroon ng asawa, and then nagkaanak siya ng lalaki, magiging bakla din ba yung lalaki? It depends on the phenotypic and genetic material. Though a genetic material niya is lalaki talaga, no um sa phenotypic naman pag-usapan yan so sa phenotypic um it depends on what is the environment of the child okay so that's true so beware of that and we have nucleus okay so nucleus naman that is uh, the basic unit na pinakamaliit pag sabi mong basic unit pinakamaliit that is nucleus no inside of the cell so that is the nucleus. What the work of the nucleus is a membraneless organelle with the nucleus that manufactures ribosomes. Uh, kaya may manufacture niya yung ribosomes, siya yung gumagawa ng ribosomes for, uh, to the process of the proteins, so the cell protein producing structures through the microscope. And the nucleus looks like a large dark spot, yan, within the nucleus. A nucleus may be contained of, of up to four nucleoli. So, actually, four division. And then we have here after cells uh, divides, a nucleus is formed when a chromosomes are brought together into this nuclear organizing region. So, new, during cell division, the nucleus disappear. Okay, di ba? Magkaroon ng cell division ngayon. So, si nucleus, si nucleus ay magdi-disappear, mawawala. Kasi here comes your nucleus, your nucleus yung pinakasent, yung pinak, ano, pinakamaliit is mawawala siya. Magdi-disappear siya because there is a division already happening. Yung tinatawag nating mitosis um, stages. Yung mga interface, gano'n. Yes, merong nagsalita. Do you have any question? May kasalita. So, the some studies suggest that nucleus may be involved with cellular aging and therefore may affect the senescence of the organism. So, pag nagkaroon ng subdivision, no, mawawala si nucleus. So, ngayon, magkaroon na ng dalawang cell, no? Yung first cell, no, magkakrate siya ng sarili ng nucleus because there's still a nucleus inside, no? Wala lang silang nucleus. Okay, so, magkakaroon na naman ng chromatin, no, yung chromosomes, and then yung chromosomes na naman magpuproduce na naman siya ng nucleus. Okay? So yeah, through the, the through a though known to exist since the 18th century, the primary functions of the nucleus was not discovered. So hindi nung panahon pa yun, wala pang na-discover, hindi pa na-discover yung function ng nucleus in 1960s. So it's now been determined that nucleoli manufacture the subunits that combine to form ribosomes. 
Yan, the cells protein producing factors accordingly the size of nucleon depends upon the ribosomal ribosomal requirements of the type of the cells so in which they are found. Yan. Kaya minsan may taong mataba. Yan, mataong mataba, mata taong uh, payat, no? If they are mataba, so ibig sabihin yung nucleolus nila uh, are producing more uh, ribosomes that create we know that ribosome is producing or the, the producing uh, factories of protein, right? So, yung mga muscles, naki muscles, yung matatap, ma, talagang energy nila, no, ma, uh, muscles talaga yung mga biceps nila, ang ganda ng katawan, yung sexy body, ganun. Yan, para lang yun sa mga ducks, ha? Hindi ko lang sa mga dudes. Yan, sa so, dapat, no, like, uh, yun, there is um rich in the, Reach in the factory of the ribosomes. And we have nuclear envelope. We have nuclear envelope, no? And a nuclear envelope is a double layered membrane that enclosed the contents of the nucleus during most of the le cell's life cycle. So this is the nuclear envelope composed of a uh, yeah, nuclear pore complex, dumadaan si ribosomes. Yeah, and ito yung nuclear pore complex. Yan dumadaan si ribosomes. Ayan, going into endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, kasi ito naman yung endoplasmic reticulum. Na malabas doon si ribosomes and then magpunta doon kaya endoplasmic reticulum. A rough endoplasmic reticulum. Okay? So we have nuclear pores. Nuclear pores, yun. So yun. Si nuclear envelope, nakasabi ko kanina, si nuclear envelope, siya yung envelope, no? Yung, yung cover ng nucleus. And we have nuclear pores, yan dumadaan si ribosomes, yung pag-create ng... Uh, uh, nucleolus, no? Nucleolus na create ng ribosome. So, lalabas siya doon sa uh, nuclear pores. Okay? We have here, nuclear envelope is provide, pro, uh, perforated with holes called nuclear pores. The, these pores regulate the passage of molecules, yan, between the nucleus and cytoplasm. Diyan din dumadaan sa nuclear pores yung mga information na pinaprocess. We have the phenotypic and genetic, uh, genotypic material. Kasi diyan naman nakikita si DNA. Diyan kasi napaprocess si DNA. And RNA. Ayan. Si RNA, DNA is also known as uh, deoxyribonucleic acid. And RNA is uh, reoxyribonucleic uh, acid. Ayan. So, sorry, deoxyribonucleic acid and ribonucleic acid. Sorry. Deoxyribonucleic acid and DNA. And RNA is um, ribonucleic acid. Okay. Ribonucleic acid which uh, composed of protein already. Okay. So, are allowed into... Okay, are allowed into the nucleus as well as molecules that provides the energy of for constructing genetic material. Ayan. So that's it. Okay, so we have here the annular subunits, cyto, cytosolic, ayan. Peroxisomes. So peroxisomes is microbodies are a diverse group of organelles that are found in the cytoplasm, roughly spherical and bound in a single membrane. Yeah, so these are several types of microbodies, but peroxomes are most common. So we have peroxomes here. All the eukaryotes are comprised of one or more cells that contain peroxomes, and the organisms were first discovered by Belgian scientists. It is known as Christian Didove, yeah, a German, a German scientist. Ah, sorry, a Belgian, sorry, a Belgian German scientist. Yeah, it's a Belgian German, a half German. Who also discovered lysosomes. Siya din ang nakadiscovered ng lysosomes. Okay? Yeah, peroxosomes and lysosomes. Now, ribosomes, uh, we also know that is uh, the one that produces the uh, producing, no? The protein. Okay? Contain tiny organelles composed of approximately 60% of the ribonucleic acid and 40% protein. So, in your career, ribosomes are made for strands of RNA. So, there are four strands of RNA. So, in prokaryotes, they consist of three strands RNA. So, you have, yan. Okay, so, we, hindi na tayo magtok doon sa strands-strands kasi makapapasok tayo sa ano, genetics. Saka na. And then, you have your plasma membrane. Yan, plasma membrane. Um, all living cells have a plasma membrane that encloses their content. So, in prokaryotes, okay, prokaryotes, the membrane is the inner layer. Okay? Uh, of protection surrounded by a rigid cell wall. And your karyotic animal cells have only one membrane to contain the protect their content. So these membranes are also regulate the passage of molecules in and out of the cells. So sa, sa plants, no, 
walang plasma membrane. Ang meron sa plants is sa wall. Okay? Yan. The membrane acts as a boundary. Yan ang trabaho ng membrane. Okay, so let's proceed now. So that's all the um, parts of the cell. So, yun. So, kaya, kaya sinabi niya na ano, uh, inner and uh, inner layer is the uh, the plasma membrane, the, the membrane in the prokaryotes no, is the uh, inner layer. Kasi yung plasma, yung plasma membrane kasi meron tayo na tawag na PM1, 1, 2, and 3. Inner layer, middle layer, and the outside layer. Yun. Uh, usually in, ano yan, Yan, sa prokaryotes yan. Pag-usapan when we reach crop protection. Okay? So, how substances move across the plasma membrane? Ano nga ba dumadaan yung substances? Kasi it's curious, right? Kumakain ka ng solid na molecules and then na food. Tapos, paano dumadaan doon yung nutrients sa plasma membrane? What process, no, ang tawag doon? So, yan, lumalabas sa board exam yung mga tanong na ganyan. Kasi curiosity yan, eh. So, we have here Diffusion. No? Diffusion is a random movement, excuse me, movement of molecules but has a net direction. No? Net direction towards regions of lower concentration in order to reach an equilibrium. So, yun. Simple passive diffusion occurs when small molecules pass through the lipid bilayer of a cell membrane. Ano ibig sabihin ng lipid bilayer? Yung fats ng bilayer ng cell membrane. No? Basta makalabas lang siya doon. Ano ibig sabihin ng diffusion? Ayan ha, ayan ka. Isama na isko para ano nyo. Uh, uh, diffusion is from uh, lower concentration to higher concentration. It means there's no need of energy. No? There's no need of ATP. No? Para ma-transfer, no? Para ma-transfer sa, from outside, di ba? Example, this is the plasma membrane, right? So pag, pag pumapasok siya doon sa loob, no? This is the outside membrane, no? Pag pumapasok siya sa loob, no? Hindi na kailangan ng uh, ATP or energy. So, kung saan na siyang pumapasok because there's also a parang whole hole din na daanan sa plasma membrane. Papasok na doon yung yung uh, yung yung substances no yung type of substances na yun, yung soft smooth type na substances no papasok doon yung nutrients na yun papasok doon sa plasma membrane no para sa loob that's the work of diffusion from lower to higher concentration now let's go to osmosis pag sinabi mo naman osmosis there's a need of um energy no it refers to the movement of fluid across the membrane in response to different concentrations of solutes on the two sides of the membrane the movement flow of fluid of fluid is toward the more concentrated solution so we have here movements of water to the molecules and equal concentration so we have example here from uh, water no para dumami no diba diba to pantay para dumami no yung kabila yung yung right sa left uh, right sa left side so left side ng uh, right side so right side ng uh, ng ng concentration ng water na to no they need a higher concentration higher concentration para or kinakailangan ng, ng push ng uh, energy ng ATP para mapuno yung uh, right na side okay so ganun din sa plasma membrane para makapasok sa loob yung mga large molecules no kailangan ng a push no the high concentration push by uh, ATP no para our energy to get inside the plasma membrane in the cells no to get inside the cells so that is what we call higher to lower concentration okay so this means that the water moves in the cells causing it to swell no pag pinilit kasi na pagpasok doon sa loob magsiswell no mag maglalaki yung cell no and then this can occur kasi mga 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 large molecules kasi yun this can occur to such an extent that the cell actually burst yan pwedeng mas mas sabog or pwedeng yun to release its contents so this bursting of red blood cells is called hemoly hemolysis ano sabi ng hemolysis no yung uh, are you familiar with the word Hemolysis. Pag sinabi mong hemolysis, what is hemolysis? Let's sing it sa iba dyan. Do you know what's hemolysis? Sige nga. Are you familiar with hemolysis? Have you encountered the word hemolysis? Have you encountered the word hemolysis? Encountered it the word? What is hemolysis, class? Hemolysis is yung, ngayon nga, di ba, pag pumasok, 
yung large molecules doon sa blood, ang nangyari is nagbe-burst, right? So, nasasabog, no? Na, na, nasasabog yung, uh, nasasabog yung blood blood cells, no? Yung cells. So, that is hemolysis, no? So, that is what we call the destruction of red blood cells. Nagkakaroon ng destruction sa kanyang cells, sa loob ng cells. Okay? So, we have in a situation such as this when the solution on one side of a semi-permeable membrane has a lower concentration than that on the other side. So, the first solution is said to be hypotonic to the second. Pag sinabi mo hypotonic, ibig sabihin, pagpasok niya no, from higher concentration, pagpasok sa loob ng cells, hindi na kailangan ng higher concentration. It should be lower concentration para hindi siya mag-burst. No? Kasi pag higher to higher pa rin yun, no? yung energy kasi na napuproduce dun, that will give bursting, no? mag-burst or mag-swell yung um, cell. No? Yun ang nangyayari. So, yun, dapat higher from higher concentration with ATP to lower concentration. So, pag, kasi pagpasok sa loob, you don't need any, any energy anymore. So, that's why uh, pag nasobraan, it will burst the cell and that is that will become a uh, hemolysis or destruction of the red blood cells. Okay? Next is we have such as by, uh, by a buffing solution is called hypertonic. No, Hypertonic is a solution in this situation, the concentration of water. Yan. In this situation, the concentration of water within the cells would be higher than that outside the cells. No, yun. So, it means that um, nagkakaroon din yan ng higher to lower concentration. No? Osmosis and then diffusion of water would then occur from the inside of the cells to the outside solution causing the cells to shrink. No? Uh, diba? Um, as you can see, diba sabi ko kanina, um, pag sa loob na siya from higher, no, hypotonic solution, may the use of hypotonic solution, pag, if you're going to use hypotonic solution, pagpasok doon ng, ano, ng cell is... Uh, maglo-lower concentration yon So, hindi magbaburst yung cell. Walang mangyayari na bursting. Now, if hypertonic naman yung solution na gamit mo, uh, a higher concentration with ATP or energy papasok doon sa cell, no? uh, magkakaroon nga ngayon ng uh, bursting. No? Magbaburst, magsiswell yung, maglalaki yung cells. So, magkakaroon ng hemolysis. And then, sasabog yun, lalabas yun by the use of higher concentration in the ATP. That's why, sabi ko sa inyo, if there is a problem on the process of the osmosis and diffusion in our body that will cause hemolysis, okay, so, yun, ang dahil yun sa uh, process ng diffusion and osmosis. And not just in the process also, but also the 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 red blood cells your cell no there's a problem in your cell which is your ma your plasma membrane cannot hold the ano it cannot hold the hindi niya kayang na ma-hold yung bursting ng swelling of the cells okay so you have active transport active transport is part of uh, meiosis uh, osmosis osmosis sorry pa part of osmosis no active transport it is a type of osmosis a type of cellular transport in which substances such as ions science is a charge no that is a charge and we have here um glucose okay we have the glucose and we have amino acids okay amino acids are transported across the biological membrane towards the what towards uh towards the region that already contains a lot of such substances, okay? Because of this, active transport uses chemical energy, okay? Yan, so chemical energy. So you have, because of this, active transport is using chemical energy. So as what I have said, no, pag sabing chemical energy, that is um, osmosis, okay? Ginagamitan ng energy, that is osmosis, Okay? And to move such substances against their concentration gradient, so the common sites of active transport are root hair cells. No, root hair cells. Yeah, sa sa veli, and sa intestine naman that is veli. Okay. So we have ions, the energy, uh, the the sorry sorry, uh, 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 energy. We have the glucose, carbo, and we have amino acids. We have proteins. Okay. So next is we have passive transport versus active transport. Passive transport, a eh? high, oh, sorry, uh, from high, from, uh, sorry. 
<clears throat> from lower concentration going to a higher concentration. Okay? Pag uh, active transport naman, that is high concentration with ATP going to lower concentration. Okay? Wala na ATP doon sa loob. Sa loob na sa high. Kaya pagocytosis is an important process. Pag sinabi mong pagocytosis, ini-injals niya. Ini-injals niya yung mga um, foreign no foreign particles. Ano yung mga foreign particles? Yung mga bacteria, yung mga ganon, yung mga nakakasira sa katawan. No? It's an important process of for nutrition in unicellular organisms while in the multicellular organisms. It is found in specialized cells called pagocytosis. So the pagocytosis consists in recognition and ingestion of particles larger than 0.5 unit meter in a plasma membrane derived vesicle known as pagosams. Ibig sabihin, there is a bacteria, and then here comes the pagocytosis, no? A process in, this is a white blood cells, no? Used by a white blood cells, pagocytosis, no? Kinakain niya. Ang tawag din minsan sa pagocytosis is also known as cell eating, no? Ang tawag sa kanya ay cell eating. Kasi kinakain niya yung mga bacteria or yung mga foreign particles para, and then yun na, i-ano niya, i-digest hanggang ma-wala. Okay? Hanggang mag-wala. So that, that's why a pagocytosis is also known as cell eating. And we have pelocytosis is also known as cell drinking. No? It's a very similar process to pagocytosis but it's used by cells to move fluid across the plasma membrane. Move cells carry out pelocytosis. Kung kanina, uh, yung pagocytosis ang kinakain niya or ini-injulf niya ay uh, injulf ha ay kinakain niya. Ang kinakain niya is yung uh, bacteria no mga foreign vesica mga, mga foreign uh, particles no uh, without fluid yon so that will become a uh, cell a thing so that is pagocytosis yung pagocytosis naman iniinom no by uh, that's why cell drink the uh, cell drinking kasi nga iniinom papunta doon sa panyang plasma membrane big sabihin dadaan din sa plasma mem plasma membrane one so outer side no iniinom yon by the use of pagocytosis na ano yung mga molecules no um or nutrients sa so pelocytosis may mga molecules na madaan sa pelocytosis na process and then iniinom hanggang umabot doon sa cytoplasm okay parang iniinom na parang yun pag inom ka tapos nilulunok mo ganun is pelocytosis yun okay hindi bacteria hindi foreign ano particles ang ina ng pelocytosis and then lastly we have exocytosis is also known as um ano um tawag daw cell vomiting Mm, so cell vomiting ang tawag diyan. Sinusuka, sinusuka tayo outside the cell, sinusuka niya yung mga madudumi, yung waste, no? Kaya tawag sa kanya is cell vomiting. Okay, so exocytosis is the process by means of which substances form in the cells are moved through the plasma membrane into the fluid outside the outside the cell so, or extracellular fluid. It occurs in all cells but is most important in secretory cells. So cells that produce digestive enzymes and nerve cells. Yun. Uh, nilalabas niya, kinukuha yung mga waste and then palabas ng uh, cell membrane. Ayan. Plasma membrane and then nilalabas sa cells. So that is what we call uh, vomiting. No? Chinusuka. Yung mga waste. Okay? And let's go now proceed to cell division. Okay? Cell division, the process of uh, dividing cells. Okay? So we have division of uh, by mitosis results in two new cells identical to each other and parents. So this is what we call a mitosis or also known as diploid. Okay? Diploid yan. This is usually happening in um, gametes and ovum. Kasi ang gametes and ovum, it is consists of 50% uh, 50% male and 50% female. Okay, so this is one is 100%. This is 100% um, genes from the male. And then 50-50, okay, 50-50%. So that will give you a diploid, no? And that is mitosis. Usually mitosis uh, used for replacement if there are wounds. Ayan. And also in, nangyari din sa reproductive system. So these are the process in the mitosis. So if I'm going to discuss this to you, like, isa-isahin ko talaga, baka abot tayo ng ilang, ilang araw. Okay. Yun lang ang kino-concern ko doon. So just familiarize the the process, the stages. We have enterphase. The first one is the enterphase where the uh, there's no cell division happening yet. Okay, there's no cell division happening yet. Okay, so this is what they call the propase. Yung propase is nag 
nagre-ready yung mga centrosome, yung cent chromosomes, nagre-ready si chromosomes, nagre-ready sila for um, division of the uh, uh, of the cells. So, here comes the uh, centros uh, centrosome, yung mga puti-puti, okay, yan, na bilog-bilog. Okay, and then the one, and then here comes the, yan, uh, ang tawag dyan, nakalimutan ko sa term na yan. Okay, the one that guiding or shaping the, uh, guiding for the division of the uh, mitosis. So later on, I have something to, ano, uh, may papakita ko, ipapabigit ako sa inyong video about the process of mitosis. Okay? Or the fertilization process. Yan. So yun, nagkakaroon ng division. So yan. So that's, uh, in the division, there is already, uh, a successful division can be found in the telophase. Okay? In the telophase. So we have here in the anaphase, wala pa siyang uh, perfect, wala uh, pa siyang incomplete division pa. So, in telopase, there is already a complete division. So, noclulus is already disappeared. Okay? We have parent cells. So, this is what we call meiosis. Results in foreign cells that are genetically different to each other. So, ano ibig sabihin nito? Parent cells. So, we have here meiosis or also known haploid. Okay? This is haploid. Used in the reproductive system. No? Uh, yan. Used in the reproductive system. Pwede din yan sa ovum, spermatozoa, ganun, 25-25% pwede sa genes. So, they are here from 50-50, division 1, mitosis, and then we have here meiosis, haploid, okay? 25%, 25%, so nakadepende na yan, 25%. So, remember, the false cells form by meiosis have half as many chromosomes as the parent cell, okay? So, these are the division of the, or stages of meiosis. We have enterpase, Yan, propase, the increase in the spindle, we have propase, and then we have metapase here, and then in the anapase, okay, yun sa kabila kasi that is at telopase yun ang tawag doon sa mitosis, yung nansoon nandoon yung complete, no, um, complete um, division of uh, uh, cells, no, cell division. Here comes now the, um, yan, the cell division, and then we have here the cell division of the meiosis already. So we have, uh, yeah, homologous chromosomes, pagkaparehas pa sila, 50-50, that is mitosis. And then we have here, ano yan, magkadivide na siya into two again, so this will give you haploid, no? Haploid process, and that's what we call meiosis. 25%, 25%. Malalaman mo kanong DNA mo, if you are AB, AA, B, AB+, plus, B+, plus, and O. Yan, and RH+. Plus. So let's have a, um, uh, summarization. Uh, let's um, um, let's have a summarization. Let's assume a cell as a factory. No, are you familiar with the factory? Yung company, di ba? Company that producing a let's say um, producing a sardines. Ganon. Yan. To make function of the parts of the cell is here to understand. So, ikaw yung nagiging boss, yung CEO, yung katawan mo ngayon yung camp, yung factory. No, understand, remember you can compare them to a factory. For example, so the nucleus, number 1, the nucleus is the managing director. Who is the nucleus? The managing director. Ikaw yung CEO pero you have your manager. So, your manager there is si nucleus of the factory consulting the blueprint. Siya yung nagbo-blueprint, nagbibigay ng uh, yung sa chromosomes. Kasi ikaw yung uh, nagbibigay ng informations, nagbibigay ng anong dapat gawin, and then here comes the manager which is managing or processing the information that coming from you as your as CEO. And then the mitochondria is the supply, supply the power, no? the giving energy, di ba? Siya yung nagbibigay ng kuryente, yun, na kaya nagpapaprocess sa factory. And number two yun. And number three is ribosomes, no? So ribosomes naman, it makes the products. Which means the ribosomes in our body, it makes the protein. So si ribosomes yung gumagawa. And na yung processing happening. Okay, so we have number four, a uh, chloroplast. A so, chloroplast of plants, yan. A, chlor a chloroplast, no, in the plants only, not in the animal cells, is supplying the fuel, okay? In the, uh, our food in the plants, okay? So, we have Golgi apparatus. Golgi apparatus is package, no, they are packaging. The products that ready for dispatch, no? That is the work of Golgi apparatus. Sabi ko kanina, di ba, bago siya i-transport, they need to have packaging. Kanina sa Golgi apparatus. Ganon din yan, di ba, sa company, they need the packaging before ready to dispatch. And endoplasmic reticulum, which modifies, we have rough and uh, 
uh, smooth through the column, uh, in the plasma reticulum, stores, no, in store mula doon, and then with the, uh, okay, uh, and then we have, and transports, no, stores, tapos tinatransport na products around the factory. Okay, tinatransport, stores, tinatransport, and then the product around the factory. And then the plasma membrane, no, is the factory wall gate. So, siya yung gate sa factory. Siya yung, uh, yung plasma membrane. Yung lysosomes naman, dinidispose yung waste and worn out of machinery. So, si lysosome kasi is the one who breaking out, di ba? Yung gini-break out niya, bina, uh, nire-recycle niya yung mga pwede pang gamitin for the making of new cell division. Now, si lysosomes naman sa company, siya yung, yung nagre-recycle yung mga pwede pang gamitin, tapos itatapon yung mga hindi na pwede gamitin. So, the cell is compared to a factory. So, ngayon, malam nyo na ngayon, okay? Did you understand, class? Let me know if you understand now. Did you understand the process of the cell? Yes or no? Yes. Are you there? So we have 19. We, also, we have, oh, only have 19 participants. Did you understand, class? Just raise your hand if you understand the uh, discussion. Which part na hindi nyo naintindihan? Balikan ko. Which part? Okay, Jason, which part? Ay, sorry. Raise your hand if you understand. Raise your hand if, there, if there's no question anymore. Wala na mga questions? Just raise your hand. Okay, we have chili. Okay, wala nang tanong. Okay. Very good. It means that you understand. Eric, did you understand the, the discussion? Stephanie, very good. Yeah, very good. How about Mary Jane? Dave, did you understand? Bantay ha? May quiz tayo. Huwag niya ako nga nandyan. Okay. Adrian, okay, understand it. Okay. Angelica, did you understand? Gandol and Angelica Oribiada. Oribiada. Ma'am Oribiada, did you understand it? Very good. Che, che, did you understand it? Che, che. Very good. Chelly Lagos, thank you. Dave, thank you. Ella May Opsima. Opsima? Nasabtan, wala. Ma'am Opsima. Raise yes, your hand, Ma'am Opsima. Oh, very good. Very good. And then we have uh, Eric, the subtan. I'm oh, sorry, not my entity hand, sorry. <laughs> yeah, very good, Eric. And then we have Jason, my entity hand. Jeric Borjal, did you understand the discussion? Very good. And we have Jov, Ma'am Jov, did you understand the question, the, the discussion? Kasi ito yung mga hindi mong pulwano. Yes, very good. You have Kathy, understand it. Lauren, did you understand the questions, the discussion? Lauren. Tulog na naman si Lauren. Okay, you have... Pakatlo na to, Lauren. Tulog na naman. You have Mary Jane Gamino. Yan, Mary Jane Gamino. Did you understand the discussion, Ma'am Mary Jane? Hello, Ma'am Mary Jane Gamino. Did you understand the, the discussion? And we have Michelle. Michelle, yeah. Michelle, Kafon, did you understand the, the, the discussion? Natulog na ata yan sila. Okay, thank you very much. You can raise down now. Lower your, you can lower your, ano. Yan, lower ko na ha. Yan. Thank you very much. No, and uh, let's have a summary first. So, hindi pa tayo tapos. Huwag kayong umalis. Hindi pa tayo tapos. In your dreams, hindi pa tayo tapos. Ayan. <laughs> and then, let's have a summary. Cells consist of three parts, no? As what I said, it consists of three parts. We have plasma membrane. This is the main part, okay? Cytoplasm, where the organelles can be found, and the nucleus, where the nucleus, chromosomes can be found. Sometimes pass through the plasma membrane by diffusion, uh, yung mga gases and lipids that found in the, uh, that is passes by diffusion. And you have osmosis, water, and the use of energy or ATP. No, um, 
we know that our diffusion is from lower to higher concentration and osmosis is from higher to lower concentration by the use of ATP or the energy. Active transport is a glucose and we have ions, not the transport of glucose, ions, and amino acids. And we have phagocytosis or shall we say the eat, cell eating. No, and we have uh, yung mga foreign particles ang kinakain niya. Phenocytosis or the fluids, uh, fluids or the cell drinking. And exocytosis is the particles and fluids that is vomiting, okay, or the cell vomiting. Osmosis is the diffusion of water from the uh, semi-permeable membrane. Water diffuses from, ito yung pinaka-unique talaga sa osmosis, no, it, it is um, passes through the semi-permeable membrane. Unlike sa diffusion, dumadaan siya doon sa uh, lipids, uh, lipids, no, yung sa fats ba, dumadaan siya sa fats. Doon siya dumadaan yung diffusion. Pero sa ano, yung, yung osmosis, sa semi-permeable member siya dumadaan. So, water diffuses from higher to uh, concentration to lower concentration with the energy. And then, uh, the cytoplasm consists, yan, consists of cytosol in which are suspended cell inclusions and organelles. Okay? So, organelles include ribosomes, endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, Golgi bodies, and lysosomes. And the nucleus controls the activity of the cell. So, in the nuclear, and contains chromosomes where is the compost or the processing of the DNA, genetic material, and phenotypic materials. So, the cell divides by mitosis and meiosis. If you guys wanted to uh, join with us, no, enroll with us, guys, I have, there my students, no, who, ano na, um, we have Jason, we have Stephanie, sila si Ma'am Job, they know how I uh, no, I, 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 this, I explain the discussion and how I handle my students. No, Hindi ko kayo iwan until the end of your journey sa Leia. You will pass the Leia, no? I assure you. But I will not promise that, but I will assure you to give my best. Because this is my last year of uh, uh, ano, last year of teaching. Kasi kailangan ko mag because of my voice is getting ano, na, rough na. Yun, so... Kailangan ko mag-rest din also. The next year na ako na naman magpupusin. Kasi straight ako, three years na nagtuturo. And then yun, um, ako na talaga magtuturo sa six subjects, six subjects na yan. Okay, mag-alala. And then yun, um, approachable naman si Sir, if in case, no, um, when it comes to technical, approachable ako and I'm willing, to, I'm open for opinions, ideas. Mas maganda yun. Kasi mas maganda, kasi tinatanggap ko kasi if they are raw, if they are mistakes that I made. Uh, dinatanggap ko yan. Ibig sabihin, mali yung paggagawa ko. So, I accept that. I stand corrected. Ayan. So, dapat lagi natin inalagay sa isin natin ka, even though we are teachers, to, kasi hindi naman lahat ng teachers tama. No, they are teachers na, kay, na, ano, na mali. And then, yun na. Kailangan din natin minsan, ma'am, in a right way. Okay? So, yun. If you are guys willing to join with us, no, we encourage everyone na, ano, to at least Try first the animal science. It's only 750 pesos online. Pero sa face to face kasi it's 900 pesos because they they can see me face to face. Yon and then they can ask anything. Kahit hindi na siya ing, kahit hindi na siya, uh, hindi na siya about sa review. Kahit ano, open ako for everyone. Para at least um emotionally, mentally, physically, except for financially. Yon, <laughs> uh, healthy kayo. Okay, para sa pag-take ng board exam, you are well prepared. Okay, I will help you until the end of your journey. Hindi kayo iiwan. Alam yan ng ano, um, proven and tested na yan. And then, um, again, no, uh, this is the summary of our discussion for the introduction of animal science. Hopefully, you have learned a lot from it. Again, we are not done yet because we still, allow, we still have a lot of slides. It's, it's still 10.30. So... Go, go pa rin tayo, okay? Hanggang 12 para ha, tayo. Kasi we don't, walang work, no? Walang work this week and next week. So, laban pa rin po tayo. And if you have questions about our enrollment, no? So, papasok sa amin. We are, we are Agricola Review Program sa class namin. So, we will give you all the files you needed. If you have, if you have, ano, um, sir, pwede ka ba mag-discuss ng ganitong topic? I will discuss it. As long as kaya ng utak, as long as andyan si Google, Kaya yan. Okay? So, I will explain it ng mabuti sa inyo. Okay? So, para maintindihan ninyo. And all our video recordings are recorded. Our videos are recorded. And there are sometimes na pag walang internet, you should understand because we cannot, uh, we cannot, we aren't, we cannot handle the situation. No, if there are for this event happen. Okay? And there is emergency, no? Kailangan talaga yun. Then, may iiwan din man ako sa inyo. 
na mga gawain. Okay? So, yeah, do you have any questions sa uh, cells? Uh, introduction. La, so they can proceed it. So, let's have a quiz. Sir, may concern na ako, sir. Yes. What is your concern? Kailan yung retake namin, sir? Ha? Kailan yung retake namin? A retake? Right after this one, after the, sa mga 15 pa, bago, bago tayo mag-proceed sa agroeconomics and marketing, uh, magkakaroon pa ako ng, ano, ng uh, post-test dun, uh, post-test ulit dun sa binigay ko sa inyong post-test, then I will give rationally on that because there's a lot of incorrect, uh, incorrect, ano, um, answers. Mas maganda kasi pag may rationally. Hindi na muna ako mag-discuss, hindi na ako mag-discuss nun. Um, ang gagawin ko na lang is nalagay ko na lang explanation sa baba para mas madaling maintindihan. And then, at the same time, um, yung inyong post-test that will be on April 15, as far as I remember, nalihalapin, tingnan ko muna sa kalendar ko. Yes, April 15, uh, March, April. April 15, that will be your um, animal science post-test. Doon pa rin yan sa questions na binigay ko sa inyo, yung 200 items. I, ano ka lang, i, i, okay. I-randomize ko lang, and then I will give 10 items that is out, na wala doon. Na wala doon sa, ano, sa binigay ko sa inyo na postos na 200 items. Ayun. Tapusin lang muna natin to para yung mga na behind, pwede silang makapagsagot ng mabuti sa postos. Para at least they have ideas. Okay? Sige, sir. Thank you. Welcome. And then yun, 15, and then 116, that will be the introduction of the economics. Don't worry. That's uh, economics is my master, so hmm, madali lang economics sa akin. Madali ko lang siya ituro sa inyo, ganun. <laughs> Nakaprepare na ako for that. Madami kayong panonoorin. Ayan. At the same time, puro kayo do drawing. Okay, puro kayo drawing, drawing. Si Stephanie, hindi, magtitake lang siya only animal science this year. Uh, so isang subject lang siya magtitake. So go ma'am, kaya mo yan. Hopefully natulungan kita. If you have a lot of questions, if you have more questions, if you want to ano, to to watch us, to go with us no, sa discussion you can have. Kasi alam niyo ba sa board exam, hindi lang yan animal science, no? Kasi sa example, sa crop science, minsan may ano, may na ano yan, may may mga questions na animal science, may questions na social science, may question na economics. Ganyan yan sa board exam para nagra-randomize yung mga questions. So dapat hindi lang animal science yung uh, ano um ni-study ni Ma'am Stephanie. Kailangan niya din mag-study ng biotech. Biotech sa crops. Baka kasi iba pumasok doon kasi minsan kasi may papasok yan doon eh. Siya ka lang number one yung tanong sa crop science, di ba? Ang tanong sa crop science number one is the following uh the following uh the following are vertebrates. Uh, vert, uh, the following examples are in uh, vertebrates. Yun ang tanong eh, sa number one na question sa board exam, sa crop science. The following are not, uh, the following are in, uh, which of the following is invertebrate? Yung tanong. Yun ang tanong pala. Which of the following is invertebrate? Yung tanong. So, invertebrate wala naman yun sa crop science eh. Yun, nasa animal science yan. Nasa animal science, nasa crop protection yan. So, yun, yung mga choices doon. Yung monkey, fish, Horse, tsaka snail. So, karamihan sumagot daw monkey. Sabi ko, ha, bakit? Kasi, sabi daw nila, kasi kakaiba daw yung monkey. Hindi naman daw, ano, hindi naman daw dinidiscuss yan during the class. Sabi ko, ha, hindi ganun. When you talk about invertebrates, it means that it doesn't have backbones. No, yun. So, it, the answer, the correct answer there is snail. So, number one pa lang sa crop science, wrong ka na pag ganun, no? <laughs> so, you should know. What is the, the difference between invertebrates and vertebrates? So, ganun yan sa board exam. May mga questions na nawawala, na nandoon sa crop science, nandoon na naman sa ano, papasok yan. Economics nga, sabi ng students ko, Sir, we are very glad because we got a lot, we we got a higher um, score in economics because uh, some of the questions, uh, some na tinuro ko ay lumabas, yung mga foundations and principles only. And then, sinubog ko sila sa case studies and drawing drawings. And then, um, also, global situation when it comes to GDP and GNP, ganon. Yun. So, in my in, in, in my economics, I will give, still, I will give, ano man, a free lecture noon sa introduction lang. Pero pagdating doon sa mga drawing-drawing, no, it should be exclusively, uh, exclusive to my uh, enrolled class. Yun lang, ha? 
para fair naman din sa part ng mga nag-enroll. Yun lang sa part na yun. Ito, this night, ito lang ko lang bibigay ng free. And then the next day, and the following day, yung mga breeding and genetics that will be exclusive for my class. Okay? Yun. Let's have a quiz. Are you excited now to have your quiz? Okay? So, I want you to have your notes with you. Okay? You should have your notebook and then you should have your pen. Okay? So, let's have a uh, Let's take down notes, okay, of what your answer is. I switch ko lang yung uh, questions, okay? Perfect kaya na, ma'am. Stephanie. Sir? Ang perfect. Hindi <laughs> ako nakapasa dun eh. <laughs> Ilan nang inabot sa'yo, ma'am? Uh, 121 ata yun. <laughs> hmm. Very good. Hello? Ano yun? Ano daw yun, ma'am? Hey, let's drink water. You need water, ha? Every time you have you study, you should have your <laughs> pichel sa gilid ng inyo, ano? Every time you study, ha? Ah. Life's changing.
Dai. H2O Nah, saya tempuh masuk late na. Cimaira lagi late. Mayra, items number nine na. Hindi ka nag-attend ng klase. Ano ba yan? Masasagot mo ba yan? Hmm. Ay. Sikit na ano ko. Naupan. Dai! Oh, Dai! Argelin! Lagi ba?
Uh. Nah, ha? Kuwarto. Kaya ito, kita pala sa kamar estudyante. Iman tayo, yun. Pwede siguro good niya ako mga estudyante. Ano ko, sir? Ano ko, may sir? Ugo kayo. Actually, kakarating ko lang galing sa ano. sa class kahapon. May nangarin yung room. So, later na lang. Okay, let's have, let's answer. Yan, may later na. Paano mo sasagot niya ngayon? Okay. Let's answer. Okay, so hopefully you got, ah, oh my God. Yan, so let's answer now. The question number one is, can you hear me? Baka nakamute ako. Okay, okay, yan. Yan. Gusto mo na matulog, ah. Yeah, number one. Which of the following biological membranes separate the inner environment of the cell and the outer environment of the cell in the animal cell? So that is letter A, cell membrane. Number two. The basic cell membrane and structure consists of blank and blank in the animal cell of the organisms we know that the cell membrane as what i have said that um osmo uh, diffusion um passes through the lipids by layer and then osmosis is passes through the uh yun, embedded proteins so that is the correct answer is letter c okay number three Which of the following is the cell's genetic material that carries genetic information? It's letter B, DNA, genetic deoxyribonucleic acid. Number four, when the ribosomes of nucleus leave this nucleus, they, the, they do important work of what? When the ribosomes of nucleus, nucleus, yeah, leave the nucleus they do important work of what synthesizing proteins letter d number five which of the following components of the animal cell supports and protects the cells so that is cell membrane next number six In which part of the cell, synthesizing and secretion of specific steroid hormones and enzymes of carbohydrates, metabolism takes place. Oh, saan daw yan? Okay. So, in which part of the cell, synthesizing the secretion of specific steroid hormones and the enzymes of carbohydrates, metabolism. Oh, pag ganyan ang tanong, ay, hindi mo na ako familiar sa mga ganyan, ganyan. So, pag hindi familiar, Ganito ang gawin mo. By choices yan, di ba? A, B, C. We have smooth and the plasmic reticulum. We have Golgi body. We have mitochondria. And we have lysosome. So, mitochondria, we know that it is uh, for energy ATP. So, hindi naman energy pinag-uusapan dyan. Carbohydrate metabolism naman. So, it's wrong. So, lysosome is the breakdown of the waste and then recycled it into ano. So, it's not about hormones and carbohydrates metabolism. So, it's wrong. So, you have you have now... A and B, right? Smooth endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi body. So what do you think is the correct answer? S-E-R. Mm -hmm. Smooth endoplasmic mm -hmm. reticulum. Yeah, correct. The correct answer is smooth endoplasmic reticulum because the work of uh, smooth in the plasma reticulum is for carbohydrates metabolism and also for uh, lipids or fats. Okay? Number seven. Okay, the correct answer is mitochondria. Okay, so produces energy in the form of ATP that is mitochondria. Mitochondria. Charat. 
Great. Mitochondria is the blank shape organelle that receives, releases chemical energy from the food. What do you think is the correct answer, class? C. Bean. Bean shape. Bean. The correct answer is it's a bean shape. Diba yan sabi ko kanina? It is a bean shape. Number nine. The correct answer is the electrochemical, chemical sharing of the information between sensory receptors, electro, sana yun, electrochemically. Sharing information between sensory receptors and the central nervous system, ah, ito mo tali, automatic, that is nerve cells. Component of plant cell is not there in animal cell. O ano yan? Cellulose. Cellulose. Yan, ang ano ko, nakita na lang yung ano ko, yung ano ko, boobs ko. Yan, we have cellulose. Very good. Yan lang ko kasi taos nakita yung boobs ko. May mga boys dyan, tingin-tingin. We have cellulose. The correct answer there is cellulose. Okay? What is your score? Let me see. Let me see your score, guys. We got perfect. Wait now. Yan ang score mo, ano, Kati? Eight? Saan ka nagkamali? Dun po sa, ano, number ten, sa cellulose, at saka sa number two, dun sa... Nakalimutan ko yung tanong. Hmm. <laughs> May Amerikana pa, planeta Amerikana. Okay, so who got, perf uh, Adrian got 7 over 10. Angelica got 8 over 10. Bakit 7 kayo? Bakit 8 kayo? Bakit ang ganyan? Kailangan ko ba ulitin yung class? Bakit hindi na perfect? Six lang po. Bakit che che? It's Chelly got nine. Eric got nine. Very good. Yung iba. Dove got nine. Very good. Sino pa? Hindi nagbigay. So we have Stephanie got 10. Ay, ay. Angelica or Oribiada got 6. Jason got 10. Yung iba? Ay. Hindi ko ba? Bakit yan? Jurek got nine. Okay. Sige na lang. Let's proceed. Okay. So, dun mga nakakuha ng six. Hindi niyo po pa naintindi yun. Yeah, Rosale. Rosale got... Ito lang score mo, Rosale. Dapat i-analyze mabuti yung question bago sumagot. Like, kung confused kayo dun sa choices, kailangan deep na ano understanding tsaka pag-intindi dun sa ano. Dapat may knowledge talaga kayo, may idea kayo kung ano ibig sabihin ng choices na yan. Ano, ano, familiar ba sa iyo yung choices na yan? Ganun. Si Rosalie, what is your score? A 
Rosalie Lumingkit. Tulog na siguro si ma'am. Okay, so next is, let's proceed now to the next discussion. Our next discussion is, hindi pa tayo tapos. It's body organization. So body organization, so you have this what we call Mrs. Green. Uh, always remember that word, Mrs. Green. No, Move, M for movement, R for respiration, S for sensitivity, G for growth, R for reproduction, and E for excretion, and uh, N for nutrition. Always remember this term, huh? If you have visual aids, you can have it. You can write this one, M-R-S-G-R-E-N, or Mrs. Green, no? That is used for movement, respiration, sensitivity, growth, reproduction, excretion, and nutrition of the animals. Okay? So skin cells, we have mast cells, skeleton cells, and nerve cells. For example, these different types of cells are not just scattered around randomly. No, hindi nasa basa basa scattered, but they have functions. No, but similar cells that perform the same functions are arranged in groups. Okay, so these collections are similar. Cells are known to be as tissues. We all know that uh, tissues is composed of cells. Or so remember, ha, cells is a uh, uh, tissue is composed of cells. Okay, and. Uh, 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 sorry, sampa tayo magsimula. Okay, system tayo magsimula. System is composed of organ. And organ is composed of tissue. And tissue is composed of cells. And cells is composed of organelles. Okay? Organelles. Ayan. Effort talaga magsulat. Ayan. Mm. Yun. Mm, yan. Very good. Ayan. So again, system is composed of organ. And organ is composed of tissue. And tissue is composed of cells. And cells is composed of organelles. Okay? So skin cells, muscle cells, skeleton cells, and nerve cells. We have example. These different types of cells are not just scattered around randomly. But similar cells that perform the same function are arranged in Group. So, these collections of similar cells and cells are known tissues. Okay? So, these are four main types of tissues in the cells. So, we have, these are epithelial tissues that form linings sa iyong uh, small intestines, covering sa lungs, livers, lahat ng organs ng iyong katawan. And we have glands also. Number two, connective tissues, no? Uh, for transport and uh, support, no? Yung mga meat and uh, other thing, yan. Transport and support. Number three, we have muscles. Tissue, ito yung isyo, collective tissue sa blood vessels din yan. Muscles, muscle tissue, no? Uh, for movement, yan, or locomotion. And num uh, we have number four, nervous tissues for carrying messages, okay? So these are the four types of tissues. We have connective tissues, epithelial, muscle tissues, and nervous tissues. These are the uh, no, tissues, okay? Uh, malaman ninyo. So we have epithelium or plural epithelia, okay? It's tissues that covers and lines. Uh, it covers an organ or lines a tube or space in the body. So ibig sabihin, ginagamit siya for lining, no? Uh, for lining sa small intestine, large intestines, ganon. And then ginagamit din siya as cover sa mga organ like stomach, uh liver, lungs, ganon. So, ginagamit siya doon. We have uh, types of uh, epithelia. We have number one, simple epithelia or known as with a single layer of cells. Okay? Nipi siya. It is a squamous epithelium that um, consists of a single layer. No? Single layer lang siya. Of flattened cells are shaped rather like crazy paving. I'm going to crazy paving. Crazy Crazy waving, ganon. So it is found lining the heart. Nakikita siya lining the heart. Okay. Uh, blood vessels sa daanan ng dugo. Sa lung. Sa lungs, alveoli. Alveoli yan sa respiratory systems and body cavities. Okay, sa diaphragm. Its tiniest allows molecules to diffuse across readily. Ibig sabihin diffuse yung papasok yung mga so like sa blood vessels papasok yung dugo yung nutrients ganun sa sa ano naman sa lang sa alveoli papasok yung hangin okay yun oxygenated blood 
And uh, yun, so we have here the functions of simple square mustatillion also is to, yeah, it is like flatten, it has a nuclei, flatten central, uh, centrally located functions and then diffusions and for lubrication, no, ang kanyang function. Next, we have cuboidal epithelium. Cuboidal epithelium consists of a single layer of cube shape. Anong shape niya? Cube. Parang square, yan, square, square. It is rare in the body but is found lining kidney. Yan. Lining kidney tubules. Uh, molecules pass across by it by diffusion, osmosis, and active transport. Ginagamit siya for uh, excretion. Yung, di ba, we know that kidney, we know that kidney is the one converting water uh, uh, fil filtering the waste, right? It's filtering the waste the, of our blood. So, converting it to urine, urine yung ihi. Okay, so, yan. So, that is cuboidal epithelium. Nakikita yan sa kidney. And we have columnar epithelium. A columnar epithelium, pahaba, consists of column, column, yan, column shape. So, it is found lining the gut. Saan yung lining the gut? Uh, sa stomach yan. Pag sinabi mong gut, gut digestion sa stomach yan. Okay, so from the stomach to the anus. Ibig sabihin yung ba esophagus, tadaan doon sa stomach, tadaan sa intestine, papunta sa anus. So that is what we call columnar epithelium. Digested food products move across it into the bloodstream. Okay, we know that. So we will tackle that once we reach digestion system, digestive systems. And we have columnar epithelium with cilia. Naman. A simple epithelium yan siya, no? Epithelia with a single layer of cells. No, it's columnar with cilia. Ano ibig sabihin ng cilia? Yung buhok-buhok. Di ba yung pinag-usapin natin yung finger-like? That is cilia. Okay, so columnar epithelium with cilia on the free surface, also known as the apical side of the cell, lines the respiratory tract. Saan niya nakikita yung respiratory tract dun sa lungs, no? Sa paghinga natin. Fallopian tube sa babae, eh. di ba yung, di ba pag na-infertile na yung ano, sa may fallopian tube, na infertile, uh, pag na-fertilize yung ovum, di ba magpadadaan yung ovum dun sa letter T man yun, no? Dadaan yung ovum from fallopian tube going to, ut to uterus, di ba? So, uterine horn, din siya magsistay para magrot siya. So, meron nandun si Vela, yung columnar epithelium doon na tissue. Tapos, may Vela yung gumaganon, ganon, oh. Ganon. Later on, may papanood ako sa inyo na fertilization. Ganon, ganon, yung ganyan. So, that is, yung parang buhok-buhok na ganon. Tapos, yung, yung, yung ovum niya yun na na-fertilize na ng sperm, yun, mag-ano siya, mag-move. Parang ginagawa niya is binumove niya. Ganon. Yun, tinutulak niya. So, that's the work of cilia there in the fallopian tube. Okay, so the cilia beat written to leaf to transport particles. So beat siya by beating siya. One, two, three, one, two, three. Parang ganun siya ba? Okay? At least, ano, alam nyo na yan. Nakadepende sa flow ng, ano, ng, ng liquid doon sa kanyang fallopian tube. Okay, we have here uh, transitional epithelium. So we have simple and we have single simple, uh, single epithelium, simple epithelium, and we have lang transitional epithelium with a variable number of layers madami so the cells in the transitional epithelium can move over one another allowing it to stretch no example nito yung sa uh, urinary bladder natin kung saan nakastack yung ihi yo yung yung dumi di ba uh, ano talaga maputok na yung pantog ko yung ganon so this is what they call urinary tract a uh, urinary bladder dito yung nasastack yung uh, yung ano natin yung yung mga ihi natin no it is found in the wall of the bladder. So, then it's going to and then after that, so we have here the transitional epithelium, no? Ito, makapal kasi kailangan ng ating bladder kasi nga, yung ating, ano, ihi kasi, may mga acidity kasi yan siya. So, pag na-stuck yan siya doon, para hindi siya agad mabutas yung mga tissues, no? And then there is what it calls a spinster. Ang work ng spinster is yung mag-open close. You know, control niya yung open close, open close. Okay. And then yun, nalalabas siya doon sa urina, uh, ureter. Ibig sabihin ng ureter, yung kanal na dadaanan ng ihi. Okay? And then we have here uh, stratified epithelia. So if we have stratified epithelia with several layers of cells, madaming layers ng cells. So uh, stratified squamous epithelium has many layers of flattened cells. It is found in lining the mouth, no? Sa bunga nga. Yung sa lips mo, yan. Sa cervix, yan. Sa paa, sa, yung makita mo sa kamay. Yung mga parang mag, yan, o, oh, yung, yung mag, kita mo yung mga, yung ganyan, o, oh, yung parang nag-cut-cut, yung lining-lining. Yan, sa mata din yan, makita. Yan, cervix, and then vagina also. Cells at the base divide and push up the cells. No, it divide, 
no yun na divide na yun divide and then push up the cells above them and cells at the top uh, are worn or push off push off the surface so this type of epithelium protects underlying layers and repairs itself rapidly it's damage so so it's a stratified effect sa epithelium yung nag nag ano agad nag 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 tawag diyan nagre-repair if there is a damage in the skin no di ba sa lips lagi tayong nagkakaroon ng dry lips no it is tapos pag nasugatan yan it is agad-agad stratified squamous epithelium di ba agad-agad siyang na ano na nahihil because of the stratified squamous epithelium Okay, so the work niya is for absorption, yan, transsecretion, and transportation also. And we have here stratified epithelium with several layers also, keratinized stratified, no, yung sa skin natin. We have epithelium has a tough waterproof protein called keratin, yung sa, sna sa nail natin, yan, sa nail, and then yung sa ating keratin also. No, it's deposited in the cells, it forms skin found covering the outer surface of mammals. Itong nails natin that is composed of uh, keratinized stratified squamous tissues. Yan, mga nails natin. Okay? And we have connective tissues. Okay, so yung, yan, yun na. Then, connective tissues, uh, pag-usapan natin more about keratinized pag saan na tayo, pag nasa integumentary system. Uh, connective tissues can further be broken down into three categories. You have loose connective tissues. Yung loose, usually found in the uh, skin. Yan, sa skin natin yan, sa uh, derm, dermi, derma. Epidermis, dermi, yan, dermi part. If you have epidermis, the second is dermi, there's a lot of loose connective tissue there. No, And then we have dense connective tissues. Yan, and specialized connective tissues, you have loose connective tissues, works to hold organs in place and it's made up of extracellular matrix and collagenous. Yung collagenous dyan, yan yung tinatawag natin na parang liquid-liquid na siyang magbibigay ng ano, movement and locomotion. Okay, and then elastic siya and then reticular fibers. So yun, that's that's the work of connective tissues. Um, There's a lot of, ano, in the connective tissues. We have blood, no? Blood, there's also a connective tissues there as you can see. Here, this one is connective tissue. Yan, may uh, uh, squamous epithelium and then we have also connective tissues there. Okay, so consists of matrix plasma. We have with several types of cells and uh, cells and cells uh, fragments suspended in it. So we have the fibers are only evident in blood, uh, blood that has clot. Yeah, that has yung ginagawa talaga for clot yung connected tissues. Kaya minsan di ba pag sa pulse yung sa blood pulse natin di ba pag dumadaan yung pulse doon sa blood natin nag 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 stretch yung blood vessel natin. That is because of connected tissues nag stretch. Okay, we have limp na yung limp naman is similar in composition to blood blood plasma with various types of white blood cells floating in it. So it flows in lymphatic vessels. Sunshine for flows sa lymphatic vessels. Okay? Pag-usapan natin yun, men's rich cardiovascular. Loose connective tissue is a sticky whitish yan. Substances that fills the spaces between organs. It is found in the dermis of the skin. Yan, sinabi ko kanina, it is found in the dermis of the skin. That's connective tissues, yung fibrous, yung kita natin sa ano natin, fibrous yung type. We have contains lots of thick fibrous and it's very strong. It forms tendons. Tendons is a joint and also a ligaments is a joint. No, pag-usapan natin when we reach muscles. And heart valves, yung sa valves, pag-usapan natin when we reach cardiovascular. And covers bones and organs like the kidney and the liver. Adipose tissue. Adipose tissue, ito yung saan nagkakaroon lang, uh, uh, saan yung nasa-stuck yung uh, fats natin. Dito yun sa adipose tissue. Consists of cells with fats. Na yun yung storage, yun ng, storage ng fat natin. It forms the fatty layer under the dermis of the skin. Yan, fatty layer under the dermis of the skin around the kidneys and heart and the yellow marrow of the bones. No, Can be also found in the yellow marrow of the bones. Kasi yung yellow marrow of the bones natin, there's also a fats also or adipose tissue. Kasi yung the work of our bone marrow is to create blood. Okay? We have cartilage. It is also known as the one of the joints here. Yung tinatawag natin bearing sa bike or sa motor. That is cartilage, no? Yung para gumalaw-galaw yan siya, ganun. O para hindi rough ang nafe-feel natin, hindi masakit. Okay? It is the crystal of the meat. Yan. Crystal of the meat. So yung nagagalaw-galaw. It consists a tough jelly-like matrix with cells suspended in it. It may contain collagen. Yung collagen yun yung parang oil-oil na dumadaan liquid na dumadaan para at least hindi siya mag-rough. 
and elastic fibers. It is a flexible but tough tissues and is found at the end of the bones. In the nose, uh, ear, sa ear natin yan, yan di ba, kaya ka siya nagmumove yan, ganyan. And sa nose natin, kaya pag ganyan, oh, tinan mo, nagmumove, move. So that is uh, because of the cartilage. And trachea dito, uh, this all as you can see here in your, um, ito oh, sa inyong neck, di ba, mapapansin kayo mayroong mga ring-ring dyan na parang, mga parang putol-putol ng mga bones. That is what you call ring of cartilage. Tawag dyan ay ring of cartilage. Yeah, ang, ang trabaho ng ring of cartilage is para pag nag-move tayo ng ganyan, no, hindi agad napuputol yung leg natin, no, yung neck natin. So, kinocontrol niya yung moving. And then you have trachea and uh, between the uh, vertebra. So, you have bones. No? Bones is also connected tissue proper. consists of a solid matrix made of the calcium. Yan, made of calcium salts that give it its hardiness. No? Collagen fibers running through it gives it strength. Yan, the collagen is the one gives strength. Bone cells are found in spaces in the matrix. Two types of bone are found in the skeleton. We have spongy and compact bone. So we will tackle that once we reach already the animal anatomy. They differ in the way the cells and matrix are arranged. We know naman the, which part nga sa sponge, which, which part of the bone. Sige nga, yun din. So we have, I will ask Jason. Jason, which part of the bone is the creation of red blood cells? Bone marrow, sir. Hmm, which, which part of the bone marrow? We have two types, compact bone and spongy bone. Compact bone and spongy bone? I think it's a spongy bone, sir. Yes, it's spongy bone. Kasi uh, sa spongy bone, dyan yung creation ng red blood cells. Okay? And we have muscle tissues. We have muscle tissues is composed of cells that contract and move the body. They, these are uh, three types of muscle tissues. We have skeletal uh, muscles, smooth muscles, and cardiac muscles. Okay, so smooth muscles, yan. Yeah. Kaya alam ni Jason yung sagot noon kasi they attended the class last time. Anatomy. Yan, so of long, pag sabi mo smooth muscles, yan. So uh, slender cells with a central nucleus. It has a cen yan, central nucleus there. It is found in the walls of blood vessels, of course, blood vessels. Airways to the lungs, yan, in the gut. It changes the size of the blood vessels and helps move fluid and Yan, move food and fluid. So, ang tabaw ng smooth muscles, pag dimadaan yung mga food, so mag mag bend siya, mag stretch That is smooth muscles. Contraction of a smooth muscles, fi muscle fibers of course without conscious control of the animal. Ano ibig sabihin ng conscious control? Ibig sabihin walang control ng animal. So, that is what we call involuntary. Ah, no. That is voluntary muscle. Okay? So, what is the difference between voluntary muscle and involuntary muscle, Stephanie? 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 Stephanie, natulog na naman. Talaga. Okay. Tignan natin dito sino may mga idea ng alam. Involuntary and voluntary muscles. Stephanie, gising. Stephanie. Oh, si Sir Jeric. Sir Jeric, what is um, the difference between voluntary and involuntary muscles? What is the difference between voluntary and involuntary muscles? Yeah. To look this is Stephanie, you know? When you talk about um uh, voluntary muscles, ibig sabihin, uh, kinokontrol yun. No? Kinokontrol ng kusa. Sa mga mo, ayan. That is voluntary muscle. 
sa puit ya nalabas yeah. niya pag may ano na may tie na that is already a voluntary muscle okay so that is voluntary muscle we talk about involuntary muscles yung sa loob yan ng organs mo yung sa stomach mo yung kusang nagpo-process sila so that is what we call involuntary muscle okay so magkaiba ang voluntary muscle sa involuntary muscle hopefully hindi pa kayo natulog ayan So we have skeletal muscles, no, under the uh, muscle tissue. We have sometimes called straight, uh, stripped, or voluntary muscles. Yeah, has striped uh, fibers with alternating light and dark bands. It is attached to bones and is under the voluntary control of the animals. Yeah, voluntary control, ha. Cardiac muscle, naman, is found only in the heart, walls of the heart only, where it produces the heartbeat, lub dub. Cardiac muscles, uh, cells are Branch cylinders with central nuclei and faint stripes. So each fibers uh, contra contracts automatically, but the heart beats as a whole is controlled by a pacemaker, which is the sinoatrial, the sino a sinoatrial valve. Okay, si sinoatrial valve yung the one which is known as the pacemaker. Okay, atrial valve. And the involuntary, which is the autonomic nervous system. So there are two types of nervous system. We have autonomic and sensory nervous system. Okay? And we have nervous tissues. No, Nervous tissues is forms the nerve spinal cord and the brain cord. So saan nagkakaroon ng communication between impulses? Okay, nerve impulses, nerves, and neurons consist of... So the neurons is the basic unit of nerve cells. Okay? Basic unit of nerve cells. So, axons, you have axons also that carries the nerve cells, impulses, and insulating sheet of fatty material known as myelin. Okay? We have usually surrounds the axons shows a typical motor neuron that sends messages to muscles to contact. So, this one is the dendrites that found in the skin of the nerve cells. And this we have here is the body. And this we have the nucleus, the axon. And this is what we call the uh, letter S. Kaya nagsisimula. Ano tawag doon? Yung nagkakaroon siya ng spacing, spacing, two-point spacing. Talawag yun, nakalimutan ko na. Letter L. Ah, letter S. Nagsimula sa letter S. Yun. Uh, alapin ko lang yun. Ano yun? <laughs> And we have vertebra. Okay, vertebrate bodies. These are, this, there is a well-defined head no sa vertebrate bodies that contains the brain so the major sense organs and the mouth we have the trunk and we have the tail no and uh, other features of vertebrates may be less apparent mamas but not other vertebrates have a sheet of muscle called diaphragm and that divides the trunk and the chest into the chest region or thorax and abdomen ayan so nagkaiba so we have the body cavities here in the lungs We have pleural cavity, right lung, and then we will tackle about diagram, yung flatten and uh, flatten and yung letter U type when we reach already respiratory. And these are the organs of the animals. We have gallbladder, pancreas, colon, anus, small intestine, spleen, liver, stomach, pharynx, and mouth, mouth and feet. So we have the body systems. So there are 11 body systems in the body, you know, including uh, yun. Including the skin doon. We have integumentary, skeletal. Um, uh, there's a lot of uh, system na hanapin nyo na lang. There's a lot of system there. So actually 11 yan. And then we have hemostasis. No? is any self-regulating process by which an organism tends to maintain stability uh, while adjusting the conditions. Paano nag-adjust yung, uh, yung uh, hayop that are best for its survival. Okay, it's as much as It's homeostasis is successful life continues. It is unsuccessful. It results in a disaster or death of organism. Pag hindi uh, good, hindi gusto na environment, ang nang, nang hayop yung environment niya, pwede siyang mamatay. Okay? These are the directional terms that you need to remember. We have certain directional terms are used in anatomy of description. We have cranial. Pag sinabi mong cranial, towards the head. Ang cranial. Pag sinabi mo naman caudal, that is towards the tail. This one, and towards the cranial. And the dorsal naman, that is what we call here. Where's the dorsal here? And yeah, dorsal and ventral up and down directions with the animal in standing position. So we have the dorsal in the bad, in the black bone and then ventral naman sa baba. And then here is um proximal naman, this one here, proximal. Sana yun. Where's the proximal? A pag so, proximal naman that is towards uh, ventral, okay? And then we have the distal that is going down uh, to the the paw of the animals. Okay, that's how you're going to identify it. And then if you're going to have it like 
uh, during your directional terms in veterinary. So this is what we call medial sa gitna. No? Medial, uh, sorry, sa, sa git, pag half siya sa gitna, this is medial yung right, uh, left, left side that is medial and lateral is that is right side. Okay? So this one should be um, familiarized directional terms kasi baka lumabas sa board exam na uh, mga import yan. At siguro isa may lumabas dyan at is meron na kayong uh, idea. Ayun. So kindly screenshot na lang. Alam ko mahilig kayo sa screenshot. And then yan. So let's have a summary. Characteristics of living organisms can be summarized by the words Mrs. Green. Yan. M for movement, R for respiration, S for... Ano nga ba yung S? Palimutan ko na. S4, secretion. Ba ba? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Kaya ba natutulog na yun? M for movement, R for respiration, and then S is sensitive, sensitivity. Yan, sensitivity. And letter G is for growth. And R is for reproduction. And E for excretion. And N is for nutrients. Nutrition. M for movement, R for respiration, R S for sensitivity, G for growth, and the R we have respiration, A for excretion, and N for nutrition. Again, so there are four main types of tissue, main, namely epithelial, connective, muscle, and nervous tissues. Epithelial tissues that is used for skin and line, gut, respiratory tract, bladder, etc. Connective tissues from tendons, ligaments, adipose, tissues, blood, cartilage, and bone. And are found also in the dermis of the skin. We have muscular tissues contract and consist of three types. We have smooth, uh, skeletal, and cardiac muscle, mus muscles. Cardiac tissue, sorry. And we have uh, our muscles. Yeah. Vertebra, bodies that have a head, trunk, and a tail. Okay, so body organs are located in the body. Cavities, there are 11 body systems. Essential, pinag-important is body functions most of which maintain a stable environment of hemostasis. Hemostasis is the stable environment of, of the animals. If hindi niya gusto yung environment, it will die. Okay, so directional terms describe the location of parts of the body in relation to other parts of the animals. Okay, so that is our discussion for tonight. So let's have a quiz. Are you ready?